have number one. <laughs> My oh. first have was not memorable at all. The only thing I remember was her height, weight, scent, address, and blood type. I was nesting in a hole I had dug next to a driveway of a girl I'd been observing. I recognised the sound of her car leaving and flattened my body out so she could not see me protruding from my watch hole. She drove off and I leapt into action. I had a, I'd been preserving a dog corpse for the last five weeks, waiting for this opportunity. I laid the dog corpse across the driveway and knelt next to it. I forced tears to fizz from my eyes by crushing a cyst that had formed on my neck with my hands. I crushed and crushed until I felt one of my fingertips rupture the cyst. Tears started flowing freely and my trap was set. After some time, I saw the girl driving up the street. She had returned. I started weeping uncontrollably and howling at the moon. Oh! She slammed the brakes on as she saw me and, and wound her window down. Oh my god, what happened? Twerk! Twerk hit my dog! My dog is dead! I saw the pity swell in her eyes and I knew I had a chance. She got out of the car and walked over. I stood and hugged her immediately, making sure to continue weeping. Her scent danced into my nostrils and my pupils began pulsing. My grip around her tightened. I'm so sorry this has happened to you, she whispered. I I slowly pulled away and from the hug and looked right into her eyes. I can't bear to be alone tonight. She looked down oh. at the dog horse <laughs> and back up into my eyes. Well, do you want to come in for a cup of tea? Before, before she had even finished the question, I grabbed her wrist and started towards her house. We sat and spoke for hours, and I made sure to stay as sad and depressed as I possibly could. During a break in conversation, I saw my opportunity and shot my oily tongue in and out of her mouth. Oh. She pulled away, hesitant. Uh, what, are you, what are you doing? I'm dead. I'm dead, I'm dead. <laughs> she looked unsure but kind of shrugged and let me continue. I entered her and my erectile tissue began expanding like elephant toothpaste in her guts. I, it wasn't long and I began ejaculating one solid chunk. I detached myself from her and started leaving her house. She watched on confused as my chunk dangled from her split. Jerk Dan, I said, and slammed the door behind me. Had number 12. We're not going in order? You're just picking them out where you I want. I just picked them out randomly, my fellow okay. <clears throat> Number 12. I was fishing for sluts in an old pub on the outskirts of Brisbane. It was 2.30am, which is prime time, and I saw a middle-aged overweight woman playing pokies while clutching three pints of beer in one hand. She looked about seven months pregnant. She was drunkenly swaying side to side, mumbling threats at the pokey machine. My neck stiffened and my toes curled so far back that I heard the bones break. I floated over to this beautiful beast and rested my hand on her hot, clammy shoulder. You having a win? I whispered. <laughs> she turned and squinted at me, struggling to keep me in focus. Nah. She turned back to the machine and kept gambling. I dove my hand into my pocket and started fumbling with some coins I had in there. The sound of the jangling coins caught her attention and she looked down at my pocket. You could have couple of spares, or what? I'll have the win with you, get free spins, can a smile crept onto my face, and I strategically pulled out a pack of cigarettes and a handful of coins. Here, have four dollars. I'm going to get a drink. Would you like one? I probably shouldn't, because of the baby. But fuck it. This color I'm by, this is this really the last one now? Well, I left the cigarettes next to the her pokey machine and urgently returned with the drinks. I had already, she had already lost the four dollars I gave her and was rubbing her pregnant belly. Come here, quick! The baby's kicking. Must be sort of the run I can. <laughs> I ran over, handed her her drink, and felt her sticky belly. And the baby was indeed kicking. We shared a special moment, and she noticed the cigarettes out of the corner of her eye. Can I have a smoke or walk camp? Success. She had taken my bait like a good little fish. Yes, let's go and have a smoke. I had strategically parked my car right next to the smoker's area, and after watching her have a smoke and drink both of our drinks, I let her know that it's after 3am and that we can't get any more drinks. I'm sober and my car is just there. Why don't we go back to mine and have a few more drinks and smokes together? She looked me up and down. You're all right, then, but I'm the two more because of me, baby. <laughs> so I'm a responsible mother. I had reeled her in. Now all that was left was to do and go home and enjoy my meal. 
She vomited multiple times in the car ride home, but I did not mind. I sped home and took my beast inside. I made her a rumbo as soon as we got inside and sat her on my couch. She knew what I wanted and opened her legs. She was wearing a denim skirt and the smell that greeted me was something from the deepest pits of hell. I lunged at her groin and enjoyed myself a late night meal, tonguing at her golf ball sized clit. Fuck yeah! She writhed with pleasure, <laughs> sipping her rumbo throughout. I extracted my tongue from her and plunged my stiff steak deep into her. I thrust it forwards and my eyes bulged out of my head. I was experiencing true happiness. Well, I flipped her over and started attacking her ass. A fecal fountain squirted out around my little brown. My mind, body and spirit all aligned and I came with such force that she started lactating sperm from her tits. One of the benefits of having pregnant women is there is no need for protection. The moment I had had her, I booked her an Uber. I led her to my front door and she turned to say goodbye. Call me Samson, this is fucking good, eh? No fucking way. I slammed the door in her face and went to wash my lounge room and body. I was a brave knight and I had truly slayed a dragon this evening. Have number 26. I smelt her cunt from across the dance floor and my tongue flicked out of my mouth and moistened my eyes with a firm lick to each eyeball. She was drenched in sweat and was clearly on drugs. I snapped my neck back and let out an almighty roar. My scream caught her attention and all the blood in my body turned into foamy sperm. I stared at her tits <laughs> and felt drool pouring out of my mouth like a running tap. I power walked over to her, not taking my eyes off her tits and shoving other people out of the way. I immediately started dancing with her and was grinding on her sweaty back. She pushed back into me and I knew she might accept my mince seed this night. Her bright red hair was plastered to her back with sweat and I slid it out of the way with my pointer finger and started tonguing at her neck. <laughs> <laughs> her skin tasted like blue cheese and she started panting <sighs> she rocked her head back onto my shoulder and, pl and I placed my hands on her fat damp tits while still furiously tonguing at her neck and ear as I groped her thick chest I whispered you want to get out of here her eyes were completely out of focus and as she opened her mouth I could smell that she had vomited recently as she spoke a fleck of kebab shot out of her mouth and onto my cheek I nearly came I, I want you yeah, to drill a hole through my cum, she said. I grabbed at my throbbing brown to stop it from ejaculating. I composed myself and led this beast from the club. Outside, when the street light hit her, I could see that she'd been involved in some sort of car accident as she had deep scarring on the left side of her morbidly obese body. This only excited me further, and on the way to the taxi rank, I saw an alleyway. I couldn't wait. I nodded towards it. Yeah, that's perfect. I need to piss anyway, she said. We ducked down the alleyway and she started squatting next to a dumpster and started taking a powerful piss. Piss gushed from her cloaca. She lost her balance and fell sideways. Piss ran up and down her legs and torso as she continued pissing and struggling to get back up. I tried helping her up, but she was far too much mass. I fell on top of her and heard a slap as I landed on her piss-covered tank top. We immediately started tonguing. There were no lips involved. It was pure tongue. I felt small chunks of food and drug as my tongue moved and searched through her mouth. We started rolling around in the alleyway and I could still hear her pissing. I wrestled my hand down her piss-soaked underwear and felt a thick, wiry plume of pubic hair. My little brown had slithered out of my jeans, and once I located her still dripping gap, I inserted my brown. I rolled her onto her massive back and, and pushed her knees back and started drilling like she had requested. Oh, what is that? Are they even people? I heard shouts from the streets as they peered down our alleyway, but I did, I did not dare stop. Let's give them a show, I said through gritted teeth. I drilled as hard and fast as I could while staring at her sloppy breasts. <laughs> My eyelids peeled back out of sight as I began climaxing. My mouth opened so wide that I heard my jaw dislocate and I drained my essence into this foul dragon. I deflated to half my size after I finished ejaculating and I could see concern in my prize's eyes. You all right? She mumbled. I am now I've been fed, I said. And I detracted my now limp little brown as I continued to sprinkle ejaculate on her heavy set thighs. I stood and walked away, left her rolling around in her own piss, hailed a taxi and drove home without even saying goodbye. Fuck yeah! Have number 22... <gasps>
22. 22. Mr. Blue, you've had so many hows, Mr. Brown. I've had a few. He's had a few. I've had two. Look at you. <laughs> <clears throat> I was enjoying my stillborn roast for breakfast when there was a knock on the door. I glided backwards to my front door and opened it. I was greeted by an absolute monster of a woman. She was at least eight foot tall. I stared up in amazement. She had long, thin hair and a receding hairline, a monobrow, and some hair on her chin. She smiled to reveal her yellow teeth scattered throughout her mouth. I'm your new neighbor, she bellowed. I just coming to introduce myself. I am Hulk from Sweden originally. She offered to shake my hand, and her hands were the size of dinner plates. I'd never seen such a massive woman before, and I felt a third testicle descend from my inner core, as I knew it would take a lot of mints to fill this creature. Welcome to the neighborhood. I am Matt Brown. Pleasure to meet you, Matt Brown. <laughs> she had a twinkle in her eyes, and my little brown sensed something happening. Would you like to come in for a cup of coffee? I inquired. <laughs> that would be lovely, she replied. She had to duck to enter my house and remained hunched over to not hit her head on the ceiling. The floorboards creaked and cracked under her weight as she walked. I led her to the lounge room and told her to sit. She instinctively sat on the floor as she knew her head would still hit the ceiling as she sat on the couch. I went to make the coffees and glanced back right before I left the room. She was staring back at me and biting her bottom lip lustfully. Her crooked yellow teeth pierced through her lip and blood was rolling down her face and dripping from her hairy chin. I gave her a little wave and continued to the kitchen. I could not believe my luck. Not only had this freakishly large giant wandered straight into my lair, but she was showing very obvious signs of interest. I returned with the coffee and as I entered the lounge room, I looked at Hulk and she was completely naked. She had light Light brown hair in between her tits and all over her back and legs. I could see that look in your eyes, Matt. Now come and have me. I pegged the coffees at the wall and let out a victorious shriek. Ha! My legs and torso swelled up to such a size that my clothes ripped off of me. My little brown was dancing like a cobra, ready to strike. And then all three of my testicles were writhing with maggots and hot mints. The giant, still hunched, sat on her ass and lifted her giant hairy legs in the air. Break me, Matt Brown! She screamed. I sprinted at her and with a run-up, punched her huge gaping split. It <laughs> swallowed up my arm to my elbow and I felt her cunt grasp onto me. The giant stirred with pleasure and grabbed at the back of my head. She pulled me in and licked my face with her horse-sized tongue. With my free arm, I started groping at her lightly hairy tits. I managed to pull my arm out of her and lined up her gash with my hips. I thrust forwards and my little brown didn't even touch the sides. So wide set with this was this monster's pussy. The beast started sucking on my entire head and this sparked my little brown to swell to ten times its size. I was finally erect enough to feel the sides of her box and started jackhanger hammering at this creature while my entire head was still in her mouth and both my arms played with her huge sagging tits. The inside of her mouth smelled like rotting meat and I power vomited directly down her throat similar to how a mother bird feeds its young. I felt my ejaculation surge begin in my ass so I jackhammered harder and harder until I exploded. My little brown opened like a blooming flower and glowing hot red molten mints surged from my core. She released my head from her mouth and she felt her insides being burnt from my mints. Black smoke <laughs> billowed from her mouth and eyes and she collapsed backwards unconscious. I finished coming and unplugged my disfigured little brown. The giant was dead. Smoke still pouring from her. Burnt from the inside out. I dragged her corpse to the my incinerator and turned her huge corpse into ashes. I had pinched a load off in a giant and it wasn't even midday yet. Fuck yeah, cunt! Have number 37. <laughs> I was volunteering at my local aged care home. I enjoyed watching the elderly struggle to do basic everyday chores, and the fact that they relied on me to help them had an aphrodisiac effect on me. It was lunchtime, and I was spooning soup into a 94-year-old lady's mouth. 
She was incredibly brittle and tiny. She had a permanent hunch and weighed less than 40 kilos. I enjoyed feeding her. I carefully balanced the soup and slowly brought it to her mouth. Sometimes I would purposely spill a little down her chin and let it dribble onto her upper chest. The spilled soup would start to roll down her top, and right before it did I would stop it with my finger and slowly mop it, mop it up all the way back up her chest. Then I would lean in close to her and sexually suck the soup off my finger, only centimeters from her face. Mm. The extremely old lady laughed nervously and leant back. Once lunch was over, I took her back to her room. The old lady had lost control of her bowels and had soiled herself. Her nappy was filled to the brim with liquid shit, and it wobbled over the edge and ran down her legs. I felt my little brown stir, but I pushed my lustful thoughts aside. I took her to the bathroom and removed her nappy. Shit slopped on the floor, and it smelt of Greek corpse. I resisted the urge to dip my testicles in the mess and started toweling the shit from her legs. Oh dear, what a mess, Peter. Peter, I am Matthew Brown. <laughs> Don't be silly, Peter. I know your handsome face better than anyone. <clears throat> it had just occurred to me that this old slag was having a dementia moment and thought that I was her late husband, Peter. I felt my blood pressure rise and my meaty body started to swell. I began sweating profusely and my urges were getting the better of me. I sensually started wiping the shit off her legs and worked my way up to her ass. Once there, I pulled her saggy cheeks apart and slowly but firmly started wiping the towel, wiping the towel up and down, making sure to apply a little extra pressure as I ran over her asshole. <laughs> oh, Peter, you're still so cheeky after all these years. I quickly stood and pressed myself against her back. My mouth was right on her ear and I whispered, why don't you let Peter get real cheeky, darling? <laughs> oh, Peter, take me now. Consent! I screamed. <laughs> I immediately started tonguing at her ear and ripped off her top. She was now completely naked and her tits hung like pool balls in a pair of stockings. I picked her, picked her up and placed her on the vanity in the bathroom. I pulled her legs apart and my little brown was already eagerly throbbing. I stabbed at her gap, but she was completely dry. I looked around and saw the shit him on the floor. I bent down and grabbed a scoop of her shit and rubbed it all over my little brown and fingered a bit up the old lady. I thrust it forwards again and entered her century old box. Oh, Peter! She gasped. I ripped her legs fur further apart and fucked as hard and fast as I could. I stared directly at her hanging tits as they violated I violently shook around from the force of my pounding. I was getting close, but slipped on the shit on the floor. I fell backwards and took the old bitch with me. My back slapped right in the middle of my shit, and the old lady fell with her chest on top of mine. I grabbed her ass and continued to fuck aggressively. Shit splattered onto the walls around us, and I rolled over into the, onto the shit. I positioned the old lady into doggy position. I grabbed two fistfuls of her stretchy elastic back skin and pulled her back into me so I could feel her at maximum depth. Her breasts were hanging in the shit and I could hear the surprise in her voice at what was happening. Oh dear Peter! With one last thrust my little brown opened up and I released a huge amount of mint. With incredible force I came over 15 litres of ejaculate mint. I let her flop onto the shit covered floor and disconnected my little brown from her. I placed her in the shower, scooped my mints out of her with a ladle and cleaned the bathroom. I could not believe this conquest. I truly am a king. Bow to me, you fucking cunts! Have number 32. I was on a secret trip to Thailand to have as many prostitutes as my mints would allow. Oh. I spent every wake and waking second paying anyone who would let me to have them. One particular have really stands out. I was power walking down a street, holding out Australian money and urgently nodding and gesturing to the money in my hand at any human I passed. Then I saw him. It was a Thai man at the beginning stages of his transition into a ladyboy. He had, he had a little bit of facial hair and only had one left breast 
implants so far. He was wearing a tight dress. Close enough, I thought to myself. I stormed over to him and aggressively shook my money in his face. Sucky, sucky! Let me fucky! The Thai man hesitated, but then saw my Australian cash. He nodded and said something I did not understand. I told him to shut up and firmly took his hand. I full-on sprinted back to my hotel, all the while clinging to the Thai man's hand. He fell over multiple times as he couldn't keep up, and I had to drag him and jerk him back to his feet. By the time we got back to my hotel, he was terrified. Get upstairs! I yelled and followed him, making sure to have a feel of his robust little Thai ass as he scuttled up the stairs in front of me. We reached my room and I pushed the Thai man aside and Spartan kicked the door off its hinges. I hadn't blinked for well over three days now, and my eyes were so red they looked like hawker clits after a 12-hour shift. I could tell the Thai man was new to this, and he nervously entered my apartment. I placed the door back in the doorway and led the Thai man to my bedroom. Just relax. I am Matt Brown. <laughs> I lifted the dress off the one-breasted Thai man. I stared at his left breast, then my gaze lowered to his hanging, swinging cock. My hackles shot up on my back, and I instantly dropped to my knees, and without using my hands, wrapped my mouth around his little tight cock. I immediately started sucking, and eagerly sucked, as if trying to swallow him. <laughs> I stared up into his face, of the time man with my little red, raw clit eyes, and he looked down at me, horrified, my little brown, engorged, and crawled out from my torso. I stood, and spun the little time man around. He said something in Thai, but again, I did not understand and told him to shut up. I bent him over my bed and pulled his cheeks apart. I power vomited on his little dot and inserted my reproductive link. I hacked away at his ass, lifting and throwing the Thai man all around the room, only to catch him and reinsert my little brown. I fucked feverishly and unrelentingly until finally my meds levels were high enough to ejaculate. I unhooked my little brown and pinched the tip of my dick so that my mints came out in all funny directions. I laughed and laughed as ejaculate sprayed in all directions. <laughs> sprayed on the wall, on the ceiling, on the windows, on our faces. <laughs> We finished and lay on my bed together. I was supremely exhausted, but the Thai man sheepishly turned to me and explained how he no longer wanted to be a ladyboy and that I had changed his path in life. I told him to shut up. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> Have number 51. During my time at university for photography, I would often work at the cemetery as a grave digger over the summer for extra money. On this particular day, I started my shift early. It was the evening, and I walked past a funeral. There was someone in the middle of a eulogy, and I overheard, Taken so young, but only twenty-three years young. I stopped in my tracks and automatically started sniffing the air. <laughs> and Sarah will be remembered for her love of fitness, family, and friends. Mm, fitness. She must have a great body. A shock of excitement struck me, and I shit my nappy. I kept walking, but I made a mental note of this particular grave. Nighttime soon came, and I had already filled the two other graves. I wanted to be able to take my time with this last one. I stood, staring down into the grave where a beautiful coffin was glistening in the moonlight. I looked around to make sure no, no one was doing any late-night grieving, and I jumped down into the grave. My eyes bulged out of my fucking eye sockets, and I jimmied the coffin open with my incredibly hard and erect little brown. I pulled the lid open and saw that this corpse was one of the most beautiful corpses I'd ever seen. Easily top four. Tight, firm body, very little bloating, and a sexy face. She was wearing a beautiful white dress. The nighttime helped disguise the fact that she was a decomposing corpse. Rigor mortis had set in, and her limbs were very stiff and set. I eagerly grabbed at her tits and groin, moaning loudly as I did. Oh, 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 Sarah. Oh. I plunged my thumbs deep into her decomposing neck, and they easily broke through the skin. I lifted her up and bent her back so she was in a seated position. I wrestled 
pulled open her stiff jaw and placed my nuts on her tongue. Oh yeah, you're a dirty little talk corpse, aren't you, sir? I poked at my ball bag and had a chuckle to myself. <laughs> then finally, I lifted her dress. I used all my force to rip open her legs. I tugged at them, both, and one of them snapped clean off. So now she was in a seated position and she had one leg bent to the side. She was ready. I removed my shit-filled nappy and tossed it out of the grave. Pre-mince was bubbling from the tip of my little brown. I surged forwards and entered the cold, rotting corpse. As soon as my little brown parted her gaps, I, my body trembled with pleasure. I thrust it forwards hard and slowly drew back my hips, then thrust it forwards hard again. I leant forwards and started making out with her face and open mouth. My thrusts became harder and harder and faster and faster. My nutsack slapped against her ass and my gills widened as I inhaled as much, as much oxygen as I could to fuel my fuck fest. I arched my back as I felt the beginnings of my release. My hips suddenly locked forwards and I expelled my DNA with such violent force that mince coursed through her body and rocketed out of her open mouth and straight back onto me. I screeched with pleasure and tears of joy fizzed from my my eyes! Ah! My body went limp and weak, and I disconnected my little brown from the corpse cunt. <laughs> the corpse had mints oozing out of every orifice as I straightened her out, chucked her snap leg off back in the coffin, and slammed the coffin shut. I can't believe I get paid for this. Fuck yeah! Have number five. I was working as a trolley boy at Woolies one summer. I was walking through the car park hunting for any straying trolleys. I would practice stalking the trolleys, catching them, and bringing them back to my pretend lair where the trolleys go. Sometimes I would twist and thread my penis in and around the steel frame of the trolley. I loved my job. One fateful evening that all changed. I was molesting myself near a trolley when I saw her near the Woolies entrance. A morbidly obese woman in a wheelchair was struggling to place her groceries in the car through her window. She was wearing a large pregnancy dress. Something was drawing me to her. I sniffed the air and caught a scent. Mmm. Familiar. <laughs> Mm. Mm. Then I remembered that scent. That morbidly obese lady in the wheelchair was the deaf tuck shop lady that worked at my high school. I'd always found her so appealing. I bounded over to her, backwards of course, and turned to face her when I reached her. Her tits hung down to her hips, and she had large, thick glasses on, which magnified her eyes. She had sweat droplets on her upper lip, and her mouth was agape. My nipples scrunched up into little black sultanas, and my ass cheeks crackled with heat. Miss Swetchquet. Do you remember me? I'm Matt Brown. I graduated from Gold Coast Special Secondary School last year. I was the only one who always asked for raw meat in my meat pies. <laughs> Matt Brown. Yes, of course. How could I forget? Do you grown up, Matty? Yes, that's me. All grown up. Please let me help you with these groceries. I started putting the groceries in the car, and I couldn't help but have a little flirty flirt. Miss Wedgquet, is there a Mr. Wedgquet? <laughs> no, not for me. I don't think- I lunged forwards and rammed my tongue down her throat, all the way down. So far down, the tip of my tongue was flicking the bile in her stomach. I grabbed either side of her head and pulled her into me. Our lips mashed together with such force that they were ripping and tearing our lips and gums apart. I pulled back to see her reaction. She was in utter shock. What? What are you, Madame? I am from Planet Quelch. I shot forwards again and we kissed with such passion that my back grew moss. I kissed her face all over at great speeds. She was kissing right back and hungrily sucking on my tongue and face. Do what you want with me, Madame, she said as saliva bubbles dribbled down her fat chin. I put my hands in her armpits and lifted her. I spun her around and jammed, jammed the top half of her body through the open car window. Now only her bottom half protruded from the car window. I lifted her massive dress to reveal the huge, chunky, damaged legs and ass. 
of this deaf tuck shop lady. I pulled her huge shit-stained panties down and my little brown burrowed out of my pocket. I smeared my pre-mints across her buttocks and fed my little brown in between a few fat rolls roughly in the centre in hopes I would find the nest. She groaned with pleasure (laughs) as my stiff, stiff flesh shoe found its target. By now a small crowd of people had stopped what they were doing and were looking over. But once I was inside of this (laughs) forbidden fruit I had lusted after for my teenage years, I could not stop. I fucked deep and thorough. I smashed hard. Fuck, 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 fucked her brains in. People started screaming in horror as my grip tightened on her hips and my fucking intensified. The fat, deaf tuck shop lady was bellowing with pleasure. (laughs) And then I flooded her guts with mints. Thick, black mints. Onlookers started screaming and I had to unplug my little brown. In a weakened state, I realised what I'd done. I see my boss coming sprinting towards me. I have no choice. I can never come back. I, I start bounding backwards and make eye contact with the deaf tuck shop lady one last time. Thank you, she says, with mints gushing from her slit. No, thank you, I say, and bound away backwards. Have number 19. <laughs> I was lingering around the female change rooms at Kmart, right. hoping to catch a glimpse of some flesh through the curtains. Every now and then I would see a flash of tit or ass, take a mental note of that image, and then I would enter one of the empty change rooms and use that mental image and molest myself, creamy, straight into my nappy. My senses picked up on a change room where the occupant had not pulled their curtain across properly. I allowed my senses to guide me to the best possible angle to increase maximum sight. I glided over to the position, (laughs) just in time to see two tits in the reflection of the mirror inside the change room. Click! Mental image saved. I screamed with victory. and startled the other shoppers. With mental image in hand, I quickly ducked into the closest empty change room. I had barely pulled the curtain across, and I was already molesting myself. I could see those two tits so clearly in my mind. Even when I opened my eyes, the tits was all I could see. Thick, creamy cream squelched from my pores. Oh, yeah. My self-molesting intensified to sexual assault. I grabbed my cock hard. I shook it around hard. You want some of this? Oh, you fucking want some? I couldn't help but trash talk at my cock as I jaggedly tugged at it. Can I help you? I, s- 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 <laughs> I stopped sexually abusing myself and stood frozen, cock still in hand. This voice had come from behind me, which meant there was someone in the stall with me. You didn't even see me when you came running in here, mate. (laughs) I released my little brown and slowly turned around. There, sitting in the change room chair, is a solid middle-aged lady. She had really short buzz-cut hair, a short and stocky build, a white crop top which barely contained her huge fatty liquid tits and her huge belly bulged out underneath. Her armpit hair, saturated with sweat, stretched down her waist. Then she had a denim skirt and Etnies skate shoes on. I was frozen in fear and did not know what to do. I felt an urge to bound backwards and just never look front. Don't let me stop you, said the small, sturdy woman. (laughs) Excuse me? I was confused. Was she... Was she propositioning me? You heard me, cunt. Don't stop. (laughs) (laughs) She laughed and revealed her light brown teeth. Her fat but strong body jiggled. She was the first lady that ever made me feel... Disgust. I was not familiar with this feeling and I panicked. I, I, I'm sorry. I can't have you. You're the most vulgar creature I've ever seen. I pulled my pants up and turned to leave the change room. <laughs> I'll give you vulgar, you <laughs> fucking cunt. I felt an incredibly strong hand reach in between my legs, legs and grab my little brown through my pants. I was then pulled back into this woman and she sat me on her knee. I'm going to finish what you started, you little pig. No! I grabbed her hand to remove it from my crutch, but she tightened her grip. I tried both hands and she still with one hand was far too powerful. Please, I don't want you. She wrapped her arms around me and hugged me in close. Then she spoke directly into my ear. It's not all about you, cunt. 
Now let me have a turn. Her thick, super strong arms tensed even harder. Her strength was so shocking it drove me into panicking. She slapped her hand over my mouth and tore my pants off with her other hand. She stood us both up and whispered in my ear, Now either you have a bit of fun with me, or I'm going to have to tell the cops that you entered my change room while I was in here and tried to fuck me. The blood drained from my face. I realised she had me. I was trapped. She pointed to the ground and I lay down. I was terrified. She ripped her top off like it was paper and her humongous breasts dangled down near her waist. She stood over me with one leg on either side of me. She, then she squatted down and thumbed my flaccid little brown up in her. She had a huge smile on her face and she kept rolling her eyes in the back of her head. I couldn't believe this was happening. My little brown remained flaccid as she bounced up and down with it still jammed up inside of her. I couldn't take it anymore. I pushed her so she fell backwards and turned to make a break for, break for it. I got all the way to the curtain but then felt five fingers shoot into my ass. <laughs> And, and then I felt her fist flexing open and closed while inside of me. I screamed and squirted. Ah! Her other hand started king hitting me in the back of the skull. I was screaming and scrambling, trying desperately to remove her hand from my ass. She continued to punch my head. Is everything all right in there? One of the staff from outside had heard the commotion. <laughs> Everything is fine, thanks. Just had a bit of trouble taking my shirt off. I heard the employee walk off and looked up at the woman, whose fist was still searching around in my gaping asshole. Then she found something. I felt a stir surge of pleasure stiffen my body. Her hand up my ass had located my G-spot. <laughs> got you now, cunt! She started massaging my G-spot and my little brown sprung to life. She got a firm grip of my G-spot and squeezed it with her thumb and pointer finger. Immediately, ejaculate mints sprayed from my ass and little brown. My little brown was wasn't even fully erect yet, and it was flailing around like an unmanned fire hose. Then finally, she took her hand off my mouth and out of my ass. I lay there in my own bubbling mince, extremely satisfied but still incredibly traumatized. <laughs> the lady chuckled, and as she walked out of the change room, she turned around and said, Clean that up, you pig. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't how I wanted it, but this lady was my 19th half. Have number 26. It was a hot, hot summer's day, and the sun was beating down on me. I was enjoying one of my favorite weekend hobbies. I was at the dump searching for soiled underwear. I'd found a large pair with some interesting blood splatter along them, and a few with some deeply ingrained skid marks. I just needed another two or three pairs and I should be okay until next month. My beady eyes inspected the rubbish, each one moving independently. One of my eyes locked onto a potential find as the other eye scanned the perimeter of her predators and council workers. My first eye zoomed in on the potential find and indicated that yes indeed there was evidence to suggest that I had just found another pair of undies. I galloped over like an arrogant horse and scooped the material up with my hand. I held it out in front of me and could see that yes, it was a pair of blue size 18 undies. There was a dark black spot in the center and I plunged my nose directly on that spot. As, as I inhaled deeply, the smell filled my lungs and sheer ecstasy sent deep shivers through my body. It smelt old, yet fresh. It smelt of meat and feces, which was my favorite. I dropped to my knees and inhaled again. <sighs> Ah, tears welled up in my closed eyes. This was pure happiness. I slowly opened my eyes, and as my senses came back to reality, my left eye picked up on something. Just next, next to where I'd found the underwear, I see what looks like a human hand. I scuttle over like a land crab for a closer inspection. The hand seems to be severed, and the body of the hand is nowhere in sight. It was bloated and swollen from decomposition. From scent alone, I could tell that the hand belonged to an obese Eastern European woman aged 50. 53, and the underwear belonged to the same person. I knew her body must be around here somewhere. I undid my fly and threaded my little brown out into the open air. Then I flicked the tip and he shot up at attention. I let it smell the hand and underwear and it immediately started spinning and surging. It suddenly locked on in one direction and started tugging towards its target. I let it lead me, and I just walked five meters when my little brown aimed itself straight down. I stopped walking and began digging down, throwing all the food scraps and broken furniture to the side. Then my hand felt something. It felt skin. 
I shut my other hand into the rubbish, and then I pulled out a leg attached to a torso. It belonged to the Eastern European lady, whose hand and undies I had just found. Jackpot! A reasonably well-preserved torso and leg was a truly rare find. The rest of the woman, including her head, arms, upper body, and other leg, must be scattered throughout this dump. But that didn't matter, because this was all I needed. My little brown was still aimed directly at the torso. I quickly looked around, made sure no one was watching, and then I jammed my little brown into the festering, rotting pussy on this torso. Maggots squelched out the sides of my little brown, but the wriggling of those little maggots felt incredibly sexy. (laughs) I used the fat torso like a flashlight and started fucking it with great skill and lust. Corpse gunk squirted out with every thrust like a sponge being hit with a hammer. Parts of the torso were so badly decomposed that the skin would rip off, which would release powerful gases trapped under the flesh. Every time the smell hit me, my little brown hardened further. Before long, my meat batten was as hard as steel tubing. I placed the torso on the ground and started fucking down at it, crashing my pelvis into the torso pelvis, mushing the pussy rot flesh deep up my dick hole. I crushed fucked faster and faster until the old familiar feeling started welling up in my legs, then powerfully exploded up my brown cock. <laughs> Mince gushed into the corpse torso pussy and my mince had its own smell. My face turned to that of a dog when it really enjoys a scratch and I wallowed in my euphoric release. Mince gushed and poured into the like a raging river. Once done, I detached my little brown and saw maggots swarming up and down my shaft. I brushed them off and stomped the used torso back deep into the garbage. I stomped until the torso was liquefied and gone in the between the cracks. I had just fucked my first dump corpse. Still in total shock from my luck, I grabbed on my undies and bounded confidently backwards, straight past the confused council workers and all the way home. Dreams do come true, and I still visit that dump every Saturday in search of more treasure. Have number 11. I was rifling through the sanitary bins in a female public toilet, searching for snacks. Sometimes there were used needles in there with blood still in them. I would swallow them whole and then slowly and firmly lick my thick, dry lips. I was interrupted when my phone got a text. I checked. It was from a girl I'd been seeing for two months now, and things were going really great. The text read, Tonight's the night, man. I can't wait to finally be intimate with you. I think I'm in love with you. I replied, I'm so glad I've found you. I couldn't think of a more special person to share this with. I know it's your first time and I want it to be magical. I love you, Sharon. I stopped on the florist at the way over to her house and bought her a dozen of the freshest red roses I had ever seen. I arrived at hers and she had made a trail of candles which led to her bedroom. I gently pushed her bedroom door open to reveal Sharon lying on her bed wearing lingerie. I walked in and stopped. You look so beautiful, Sharon, I said, and then I walked over to her and sat on the edge of her bed. I set the mood with some slow, sensual music. We held hands and I could sense she was nervous. Don't worry, Sharon. I want you to feel safe with me. Sharon relaxed a bit and she smiled at me. I picked off the rose petals one by one and dropped them on and around Sharon. We maintained eye contact and the moment was so intensely beautiful that tears welled up in our eyes. I leant in and we shared a passionate kiss. Sharon whispered, I love you so much, Matt. I'm yours. Have me. Okay, I flipped Sharon on her stomach and ran my thumb straight up her ass and flexed it back as far as it would go. I jiggled it around hard and erratically. I extracted it and sucked it longingly. I undid my zip and freed my little brown. He slithered from my pants and sat up like a cobra, ready to strike. I violently rolled Sharon over and immediately shoved my slimy tongue into her mouth and swirled it around the inside of her mouth. I retracted my tongue and spat on her tits. Then I bent down and screamed in her ears. Ah! 
My gills stretched open and smelled the air. My pupils dilated and I shit my nappy. Cream fizzed from my skin pores. Ah, Matt, Matt, Matt. Can we just take things a bit slower? I stopped, confused. But you asked me to have you. Just trust me. We'll have a great time, Sharon. Her face softened and she smiled. <laughs> okay, Matt. <laughs> I trust you. <laughs> Just please make sure you use protect- My dick spears into her fleshy <laughs> hole! I always have a condom on! My eyes go cross-eyed with pleasure and I start pound-bagging at Sharon! I lift her legs and power fuck forwards and mash her cunt stupid! Her tits flail around like a plate of jelly in a cyclone! My jaw clenches so hard with pleasure that I feel some of my teeth snap in half! Then I feel it! My balls begin to pulse and I begin climaxing. I feel a large wave, a wave of pent up mints gaining momentum in my body. The condom did nothing as mints chundered from my cock mouth. The spray was so high pressured that Sharon was pushed away. Mints powerfully gushed into Sharon and I could do nothing but groan with pleasure. I vomited blood clots <laughs> straight onto her thrashed body. <laughs> Then I finished and flopped onto the bed exhausted. I managed to open my eyes and I see Sharon covered from head to toe in a dark, brown, chunky mince. An utter look of disbelief on her face. I'm breaking up with you, Matt. And why is your cum mince? <laughs> Heartbroken, I sit up. That was so fucking weird, you had gills, Matt! <laughs> Sharon... I'm not from this planet. I can't be with an alien, Matthew. <laughs> I understand, I said, completely heartbroken. Cream tears started rolling down my face. I started walking out of the room and stop. Without facing her, I say, thank you for showing me what love is. Then I walk home, backwards. Have a number 30. Oh, more on my back. Brown. My brown. <laughs> Stop! Matt, that's what it says. That's what it says. God. <laughs> it was a humid, sticky summer's day. I was lying naked on the roof of my house, scanning my neighborhood for drunk females. Sweat was flowing down my chest and would pool in my belly button. I scratched my scrot with my long fingernails, picking fleas off as I went. I was admiring a festering patch of discharge crusted onto the tip of my little brown. I would gently run my fingers over it and let the hard, crusty outer layer tickle my skin. Discharge had been oozing from my cock mouth for over two weeks, and I knew something wasn't right. My little brown lazily flopped around on my belly, and I could tell he was feeling quite sick. I must have picked something up from that rotting stillborn I fucked a few weeks ago. I finally scratched the crust off and headed off to my doctor's appointment. I'd never been to a human doctor before, and was quite nervous. I arrived, and while in the waiting room, my little brown gargled with pain as the other patients shot me concerned glances. The doctor came in and saved my embarrassment. Mr. Brown, follow me, please. I scampered after the doctor like a frightened prawn. The doctor led me into a room and closed the door behind us. So what seems to be the problem, man? <clears throat> My little brown is sick and is producing discharge that smells of cheesy fish and boiled cane toads. Okay, very specific. Why don't you pop your pants off for me and we'll have a look. I slowly stand, still unsure of whether to trust this doctor. I pull my pants down and reveal my writhing little brown. Discharge splattering and spraying from its end. <laughs> oh, oh my god. I don't believe I've ever seen anything like this before. I'm going to have to check your prostate and take some blood. I was unsure what checking my prostate meant, but turned around and bent over onto the examination table as instructed. I watched him put gloves on and then apply lubricant to his finger. All right, you might feel a bit of pressure here, he said. This can't be happening. Is this doctor attempting to have me after I showed him my festering disease, little brown? Surely this man wasn't a doctor. I'd never heard of such treatments. Sure enough, I feel his hands separate my huge ass cheeks, and I feel his finger glide into my messy, messy dot. I was stunned, frozen with fear as his finger fiddled around and worked its way up my colon. My mind was racing, but then I look down and see that my little brown looks healthier. He is right. Rock hard 
hard and seemingly enjoying this man's finger. The discharge had stopped and it was swollen and throbbing like it usually does. I could see the cream running through my protruding cock veins. I realised that this may be how human doctors treat my particular ailment. Maybe having cures my stinky discharge. I suddenly became more relaxed and started enjoying the experience. I pressed back into the doctor <laughs> whose entire hand now disappeared up my thirsty asshole. Oh. I felt the doctor try and pull his hand out but I gripped his wrist with my ring muscles and just like a snake I began swallowing this doctor's arm. What's going on? <laughs> the doctor shouted. His fear fueled my lust and my ass enveloped him further up to his shoulder now. He was on his knees desperately trying to pull his arm free. What are you? Help! Hey, help me! I turned my head 180 degrees so I could look him in the eyes. I'm Matt Brown. Suddenly my asshole relaxes and he falls back as his arm is freed. My little brown is swaying from side to side, eager to bury itself in this doctor. I jump on top of the doctor and grab his head on either side. I lower my face so it's an inch from his. I study him as my eyes dart around his face independently, just like those chameleon lizards. He seems to be scared, which was strange, I thought. He must be excited to give me my treatment. My tongue explodes into his mouth and wraps itself around the doctor's tongue and starts working up and down like it's jerking it. My little brown has already crawled in between his legs and has eaten a hole in the back of his pants. The doctor's arms are flailing around and his eyes were wide open. I couldn't understand what he was saying as I still had his tongue wrapped up in mine. I assumed he was enjoying it and continued. My little brown burrows in between his cheeks and dives into his ass and plunges into his inner shit. I start rolling my hips forwards and back while still filling his entire mouth with my tongue. The doctor was kicking and pushing ferociously. He must really have been loving this. We roll around on the floor, knocking over chairs and equipment. My roll fucking starts to speed up and my eyes spasm with pleasure. I grind bang harder and heavier. My little brown had drilled its way through the doctor's collar and was now sitting in his stomach. The doctor had tears running from his shocked face. I still couldn't make out what he was saying, but through his muffled screams, but I was getting close to climax. I release his tongue from my tongue and arch my back as my hips hit tops fucks thrust speed. Power fucking at such speed that my hips were a blur. Ah! Greasy black men's power flung from my little brown deep into the doctor's body. We maintained eye contact as I filled and soon my mints began gushing from his eyes, ears and mouth as his body was full. I finally finished mincing and I unplugged my little brown from his body. <laughs> mints were still bubbling and steaming from the doctor's orifices as he lay on the floor. He was dead. He couldn't handle <laughs> my mints. Strange that this is how the doctor chose to treat me, yet couldn't handle it himself. Himself. His treatment did seem to work though, and my little brown looks completely back to normal. This doctor sacrificed his life so that I could have a healthy little brown. Thank you, kind doctor. I gently kissed him on the forehead, shit in my nappy, and penguin dove out the third story window. I pounded backwards home and was glad that my human doctor experience was so wonderful. I no longer fear doctors. Hello, number 15. It was the end of a cool winter's evening. I was on a date with the most stunning girl I had ever seen. She had fake breasts and long fake blonde hair. She was wearing heels and a short little black cocktail dress. The very sight of her made my blood thicken to a paste. The restaurant we were in was the fanciest I could afford. Nando's. I've had such a good time tonight, Tamara. Tamara was texting furiously on her phone and looked up briefly to acknowledge me. Ah, uh, yeah, it's been good, man. Are you right to get this? Of course, my darling. I paid for dinner with my entire savings and we went outside. We stood outside in the cold night air facing each other. This was it. I was finally going to have the best looking girl I'd ever seen. My guts gargled at the thought of splitting this bitch. My little brown twitched eagerly in my pants, ready for battle. So tomorrow, shall we head back to my place for a drink and a thump? Tomorrow looked confused. A thump? 
Ew. <laughs> Look, man, you seem like a nice guy, but I don't feel like that about you. Like, I just don't feel that spark. My heart sank. This can't be happening. I did everything that was required of me and even spent all my money on this. I had to act fast to change Tamara's mind. I pulled my shirt up to reveal my nipple. I squeezed it with my free hand and dead flies oozed out. How about now, Tamara? You feel that spark yet? Stay the fuck away from me, man. You fucking freak. Tamara turned and stormed off down the street. Rage flooded my body and I shit my nappy. How dare that bitch lead me on? Hey! Give me money for half of your Nando's! She turned and gave me the finger. That was it. I snapped. I set chase. She screamed and started running. I pushed off the ground and glided after her, hissing as I went. I'd never been this angry. I was gaining on her and she would not stop screaming. A few shocked onlookers pointed at me as they saw me gliding along. I grabbed my bottom lip and peeled it down past my chin. Ah! Ah! Tamara saw this and dropped to the ground with fear. She curled up into a ball and covered her head, still screaming. I reached her and stood over her with my dangling lower lip. Take my money! Please, please, just don't hurt me! I snatched a $20 note from her and ripped two lymph nodes from my neck. I threw the lymph nodes at her. She pissed herself with fear and my rage lust was so out of control that I bit my pinky finger off. I was barely holding on. I needed to release my mints. Get out of here! Tamara scrambled to her feet and continued to run. My eyes scanned my surroundings and I saw a dirty, dark alleyway. My testicles were so swollen and full of turning mints that I couldn't walk properly. I waddled over to the alleyway and started searching for something robust to fuck. My senses were so heightened that I could hear smells and see sounds. I noticed a rat to my left and in one motion my hand grabbed the rat and banged it onto my rock-hard cock. My dick exploded through the rat's ass and out of its mouth and it was now threaded onto my shaft. My gills fluttered slightly and my pupils engorged with salt. I saw another rat and leapt to it. I grabbed this one with both hands and power drove it onto my hard, screaming dick. Then another and another. I went crazy. Before long, I had skewered 15 rats onto my stinky fat cock. There, were no more, there was no more room on my shaft to skewer another rat. So I knew the next rat would be the one to receive my load. A plump rat scurried to my right and my arm shot out faster than a bullet. I squeezed it slowly before jamming the final rat onto the tip of my little brown. The tip of my little brown entered the rat's ass and there it sat like an angel on a Christmas tree. I t- it screeched in pain and my huge bubbling sack was ready to start pumping mints. I got down on all fours and fucked down at the rat's tiny asshole. Cream started cascading from my tits and I arched my back and started howling like a wolf. And then it happened. Mints bellowed out of me and immediately filled the rat. I held the rat's snout shut and my mints blew the rat up like a balloon. Then bang! The rat exploded and my mints slapped against the walls. I continued climaxing and mints as hot as lava sprayed up into the night sky. I was finally free from my urges and I slumped onto the ground. I pulled the dead skewered rats off my shaft and looked up. To my horror, at the end of the alleyway, there was a parked bus full of children. They were all pointing and watching. Some were screaming and crying. A few were filming. I had made a massive mistake during my lust rage attack. This is what happens when I lose control. I was too weak to move. Look away! (laughs) Don't look at me! I tried to stop them from looking, but they had already seen too much. A police car turned into the alleyway and skidded to a stop. I attempted to... Bound backwards out of there, but felt a taser sink to my skin. I flipped back on the ground among the dead, fucked rats. The police arrested me, and I was off to jail. Fucking rats. Have. Number 51. Spot. Spot back. Yeah. Ooh. I sat in silence in the back of the paddy wagon. The handcuffs were digging into my meaty wrists so deeply that my fingers were beating like ten hearts. 
This was one of the lowest points of my life, having just been rejected by the sexiest girl I'd ever dated, and then being caught by a bus full of kids violently threading street rats onto my vascular squirt tube until I ejaculated. My mind was racing at how I was going to get out of this one. I considered escaping, but realized that I would have to live the rest of my life as a fugitive. There may be more opportunities to escape, so I decided that for now, I would follow the legal process. We arrived at the watch house and I was uncuffed and thrown into a cell. I curled up in a tight ball in the corner of the jail, but kept one eye on the other inmates. I puffed my body up to appear much larger than I actually am, and if anyone got too close, I would flutter my gills at them. In the morning, I was put in front of a judge. For violent sexual acts in public, I'm setting bail at $10,000. If you cannot pay, you must remain in jail for seven days until your trial starts. I shit my nappy. I was in total shock. Things were going from bad to worse, and I wept and wept. (laughs) I was transported to prison and thrown in a cell. My cellmate was a small, quiet, thin man. He stayed on his bunk and never spoke or even made eye contact with me. As I sat on my bunk bed, I heard the chatter of the other inmates. I heard them talking about fresh meat and pink flesh and large steak and soft fat and baby men, so I knew they were going to pick on any new inmates, including myself. I knew what I had to do tomorrow. I had to establish myself as an alpha. A calmness flooded over me, and I molested myself. I squeezed my fruit and felt my warm, lumpy sack spread and bulge in my hand. Then I slowly drifted to sleep. I was woken by my cell doors opening. We formed a line and headed to the cafeteria for breakfast. I made sure to hang towards the back of the line. While I was waiting in line for the food, I scanned the inmates for the biggest, toughest-looking inmate. Then I saw him, sitting at the head of a table, huge, seven-foot man, bald with tattoos completely covering every square inch of his body. He had a scar across his face and muscles bulging. He was kind of hot, and I caught myself wondering how big his dick might be. I finally got my food and nervously looked up. Sweat beaded down my tits, and my breathing quickened. I slowly made my way towards the huge, hot inmate. I sat all the way down the other end of the table, trying to blend in as much as I could. After a few minutes of picking at my food and not making eye contact with anyone, I start sliding off my chair and going under the table. Success. I remained undetected and was completely under the table. I started crawling towards the other end of the table. I moved carefully and exactly like a cat. My body twisted and bent around the legs of the other inmates quickly and efficiently. I made it to the other end of the table and my target inmate was now directly in front of my face. I loosened my jaw and locked my eyes on his crotch. I prepared my hands and coiled my neck back so it was spring-loaded. Then bang! In one motion my hands ripped his pants and underwear down and my mouth shot forwards like a striking snake. His massive flaccid, flaccid dick slides down my throat and his juicy plump balls fill my mouth. The inmate looks down in horror. We lock eyes for a split second. Then I bite down as hard as I can. It felt like slow motion. My teeth split through the cock skin and glide through the shaft flesh. My bottom row of teeth shoots up and enters his juicy ball bag and meets my upper row of teeth in the middle. I pull away with his severed junk still in my mouth. (laughs) The inmate shrieks in pain and grabs at his flat patch where his cock used to be. Huge amounts of blood sprayed out all over me and my skin absorbed it like a massive tampon. I stood explosively and broke through the table from underneath. I spat the cock and balls at the shrieking inmate and my head started (laughs) spinning. I projectile vomited continuously while my head spun, covering every other inmate at the table. The inmate scattered, screaming at what they were seeing. (laughs) 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 What is it? Did he just bite his tickle? Run! Run! My head stopped spinning just as a fish smashed into my teeth. One of the other inmates had snuck up on me and King hit me. I fell back and blood started running down my face and throat immediately. I was dazed but started trying to stand. Suddenly, another inmate tackled me from behind and spear tackled me head first into the ground. He pinned me and started punching my head. I was losing consciousness so I managed to slip my pointer finger up his ass. The feeling shocked him and he jumped off of me. A security guard ran at me and 
I pulled down my pants. I grabbed the security guard and flipped him around. I entered him from behind. I wanted the other inmates to see. I screamed with every pump. Ah, 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 ah. With, even the other security guard stopped and one of them started throwing up. <laughs> Mints burst through my sack dam and gushed into the security guard as I felt prongs from a taser <laughs> shoot into my back. The electric shock stiffens me and I fall to the ground and I am swarmed. What a success. Surely now everyone will see that I am not to be messed with. King Brown! I scream as they take me away. Oh, number 52. Oh. I was forcefully thrown into solitary confinement. My body slapped onto the cold hard ground. You can stay in here until your trial starts in six days, you freak! The door slammed shut behind me, and I heard the guards chatting as they walked off. I can't believe he just bit that guy's dick off. Yeah, and the vomiting was terrifying. What a fucking freak. I slumped against the wall and inspected my surroundings. It was a dark, cold room. One bed and one toilet. No windows. That's it. I lay on my hard bed. I had done what I wanted to do. No one would mess with me now. I was satisfied, and more importantly, I was safe. Mm, Time for a celebration. I slid my slippery arm down my jungle of hard, wiry pubes, and my hands started devouring my soft, squishy little brown. I wiggled and shook my balls, and they sprung to life. I pulled my pants off and grabbed the back of my knees and pulled my legs in towards my body. I extended my neck like a fully grown turtle and started sucking. My brown cock. I slurped and salivated until I minced in the corner of my room. I used my shirt to mop my mints up, but regretted it when I realized that that would be my only shirt for the week. Days turned to nights, and nights turned to days. The only time I ever saw a human was when the guards would slide me meals through the gap in my cell. It got to day five and I was struggling. My beard was thick, and I was covered in dried, crusted mints, and smelled like vomit and shit and piss and sweat and spit I was weak. I had not had anything for five days now. All creatures from my planet Quelch are meant to have every two days, or we can die. Not even self-molestation will do. It has to be a proper have. I had tossed myself endlessly, but it did not matter. I had to have. I'd even tried having a few stray insects I found in my cell. I'd stuffed a moth up my cock hole and smeared my dick on a few stray ants that ran through my cell, but still, it wasn't enough. Lying on the cold cell floor, I started losing hope. The mints in my ball bag had solidified into two firm balls of mints, so even if I did managed to have someone, I would have to ejaculate ejaculate with such force that these massive hard mince balls would get squeezed out of my small little cock mouth, which could also be fatal. I lay there and felt my heartbeat start to slow. My body was close to shutting down from my lack of having. My little brown was writhing around in pain, making scary little sounds. I closed my eyes. This was it. I started losing consciousness. Then I felt a soft pressure on my ass rim. Then I felt my asshole lips expand and wrap around something as it entered me. I started coming back to reality as I feel this foreign object work its way up my ass towards my guts. My eyes shoot open and I look down my body. I feel the thing in my ass retract suddenly and then I see it. There, rock hard, swaying gently, was my own little brown. It was seemingly staring at me. I didn't understand. It looked as though my little brown was the thing that was just burrowing into my bloated, sweaty ass, almost like it had a totally independent mind of its own. My little brown then winked at me, turned and stretched back under me and slid into my ass again. I was too weak to stop it. Stand down, little brown! Stand down, little brown! I kept yelling, but my little brown continued to ignore me, burrowing, swelling and slithering further up my ass. Then I noticed a small amount of my strength was returning. I was starting to feel better. I was able to lift my arms now, and I started pulling on my little brown, trying to rip him out of my ass. My little brown started moving in and out, slowly fucking my own sticky asshole with stringy <laughs> strands stretching from the inside of my ass and sticking to my little brown. More of my strength returned, and I was able to sit up. I was mad 
madly tugging at my little brown as it unconsensually fucked me. And then I realized something. My strength was returning because I was having... Somehow having myself counts as a have. This was going to be tough, though. I needed to have the most explosive mincing I'd ever had in my entire life in order to flush these hard, solid mince balls from my testicles. Five days without having had solidified my mince. So if I didn't ejaculate powerfully enough, the mince balls would stay stuck in my ball bag and I would die. So if I had any chance of surviving, I was really going to have to fuck myself good and absolutely go for it. Fuck it, I thought. Let's do this. Uh, I started feeding my little brown into my ass. I grabbed one of my tits and tugged it up towards my mouth and started tonguing at my nipples. And yeah, that felt good. I choked myself with one hand and with my other hand I started slapping my ass cheeks all the while my brave little brown continued to fucking pump away at my ever-relaxing asshole. Cream squelched out from around my rim as my cock got harder and harder. More strength had returned, and I stood up. My hips swirled around, trying to find the best angle to allow for my little brown to fuck as deeply as possible. I, I bit my bottom lip as my little brown started, hammering away at my G-spot. Oh, yeah. Oh, I pressed my ass against the cell wall and started pulsing. All the while, my little brown overwhelms my G-spot. It felt so good. The thick drool had started flowing from my meaty lips. I pinched and tugged at my nipples, and that's when things escalated. I clawed in my body leaving deep bloody gashes. I was now banging my cock-filled ass against the cell wall while I violently ripped and jerked at my nipples. I vomited thrush and I was screaming. <laughs> ah! My little brown fucked me hard and drove into my G-spot over and over again. Then finally started. I began mincing. I pulled my little brown out of my ass and held on tight. The two hard mince balls in my testicles started their way up through my body. They were moving very slowly and ripping apart my insides. The pain was searing hot as the two solid mince balls reached my cock shaft. I push harder and harder. If the mince balls get stuck, stuck now, I'm dead. Ah, ah, ah. My two huge mince balls worked their way down my dick. I dropped to my knees. The pain was like nothing I had felt before. I was screaming and crying all at once and blood gushed from my cock mouth. I grabbed my shaft with my hands and tried to help squeeze the balls out. I was nearly done mincing. Desperate, I jammed a thumb up my ass and screamed at the walls. Then finally, the two massive solid balls tore their way out of my dick hole and dropped to the ground with a thud. A river of fresh liquid mints followed and I sprayed every surface of that cell. I fell to the ground, still in a huge amount of pain. Blood gushed from my cock and ass, but my balls were full of fresh, soupy mints and I'd finally had to have myself. I would live to see another day. It was a miracle. Have. Number 53. <laughs> I spent the next two days recovering from the ordeal. I was near moments from death but managed to survive. I found some jelly beans in my pocket. I gobbled them down like a starving child in a bakery and chuckled to myself. <laughs> the guards came to get me in the morning of my fifth day of isolation. It was trial day. I knew I must look absolutely horrific. They threw me a new prison u uniform, cuffed me, and took me to court. I felt nothing but despair. The rat fucking was one thing, but attacking that inmate and biting his cock and balls off will be hard to explain to the judge. Plus, I was weak because I had, it had been two days since I had had anything again. Once we got to court, I was appointed a lawyer from legal aid. His name was Bob trung and he was blind in one eye <laughs> he didn't speak a word of english and just shrugged whenever i spoke to him we entered the court and waited for the judge i asked bop if he'd even looked at my case and he stared at me with his completely white eye and shrugged all rise we stood as the judge entered i made eye contact with the judge and he stopped then he quickly looked away and kept walking how peculiar I watched him walk and there was something oddly familiar about the judge. He was tall, about my height, had long black hair, beady black eyes and a thick red beard and he was wearing a black judge's robe. I noticed the judge was purposely avoiding my gaze as he read through my charges. And Matt Brown, how do you plead? Hmm, even his voice sounded oddly familiar. Guilty, your honour. Care to explain your actions during your short stay in prison, Matthew? Your Honor, I felt I had no choice but to attack. I attacked because I knew if I didn't, I would have been killed later on. 
The judge stared at me, and then he smiled at me and gently shook his head. Sounds like self-defense to me. Cleared of all charges! And then he banged his gavel down. I was in total shock. I was certain I was going to jail for many years, but this judge had just cleared all my charges. Matt, can I see you in my office for five minutes? I'd like a word. I nodded, still in shock. I said goodbye to my lawyer and gave him a carrot. I left the courtroom and found the judge's office. I knocked nervously, still unsure about what was happening. Come in. I opened the door and the judge was sitting at his desk, but had the chair turned around so I could only see his back. You have no idea who I am, do you, Brown? (laughs) You're losing your touch after all these years. Who are you? I needed to know. He slowly turned his chair, and when I saw the face without the beard, my jaw dropped. Question! Yes, Matthew, that's right. I've become a judge, and now I have helped free you. You owe me. I knew this day would come. If you don't return my favor, I will have you thrown in jail. My happiness turned back into despair, and my sloppy heart skipped ten beats. I was too weak to win a physical fight against Queston. Queston, you have bested me. (laughs) What do you want? I want to have you, Matt, right here, right now. My shoulders slump. Yes, Question. You may have me on one condition. You let me have you too. I haven't had for two days and I won't last much longer. Deal, my brother. I was still slumped in my chair, but undid my shirt buttons with one hand. Then I lazily pulled my pants down to my ankles. Question removed his clothing. His little brown was already pulsing. Its eye locked onto me. Question now stood over me, naked. He got down on his knees and with his thumb and pointer finger gently grabbed my floppy little brown and slowly wrapped his warm, brotherly lips over my cock. He started sucking slowly at first. We both maintained eye contact. I felt my little brown start to swell and my brother increased his sucking speed. Before long, I was rock hard and my brother munched and slurped on my hard little brown. I grabbed the back of Queston's head and started thrusting against his sucks. Then Queston threw my legs over his shoulders and stood up. I was still in the chair, but now my legs were lifted up, which exposed my brown dot. Queston's slippery little brown glided into my guts. The feeling shocked me and I gasped. (laughs) Queston, while still looking deep into my eyes, started fucking me. My strong ass cheeks slapped against his hips with every thumping thrust. Queston grabbed my legs and dragged me onto the ground. He flipped me onto my belly. He got on my back and I presented my ass to him by lifting it in the air. Queston dove in, slamming his little brown deep within my body. He had one hand around my neck and with the other hand he reached around and started tossing me off. He leant in and sensually sucked my ear. I could hear his saturated tongue slop and stab around in my ear canals. I turned my head sideways so he could reach my mouth. Our lips locked and our tongues wrestled as my brother continued to fuck my ass. I could sense he was getting close so I pushed back into him so his cock slid even deeper into my core. Then I felt it. His dick erupted with stinking hot gravel. I felt his <laughs> gravel filling my insides as my brother ejaculated inside of me. I felt a part of my soul die. Crescent continued to toss me and I too started coming. Bloody mints tumbled from my gout-infected cock. We both finished mincing and Crescent's now flaccid, slippery little brown exited my body. There was a few minutes of silence as we tried to process what had just happened. Kristen started laughing. (laughs) I own you now, Matt. I am the Alpha Brown now, so I can have you whenever it pleases me. I was stunned, exhausted, and satisfied. Gravel continued to bubble and leak from my (laughs) asshole. I couldn't believe Kristen had finally bested me. Now get the fuck out of my office and enjoy the freedom I've given you. I'll be seeing you again soon, you fucking pig! (laughs) I wearily collected my clothing, got dressed, and headed home. Question was now the family's alpha haver, which meant I was vulnerable. At least I was free. For now. Have number 54. Lie down, lie down, lie down. Oh, I don't know about that. Hmm. <laughs> I woke up and glanced at the clock. 2 p.m. It was my second day of freedom after narrowly avoiding jail time by letting my judge brother fuck me senseless. I had recovered from my ordeal physically, but I still felt flat, absent, 
numb. <laughs> I was no longer my family's alpha haver, and it was affecting my energy levels and state of mind. There was only one thing for it. I needed to get out of the house. I needed to go and have. It was time for me to groom myself. I showered, scratched the cheese out from in between my teeth, and scrubbed my gills clean. Then I put a bandage around my ankle and headed to my favorite spot to pick up new halves, the emergency waiting room at hospitals. I arrived and noticed there was a few patients in on this night, which means longer waiting times, which means more time to hunt. I limped in and spoke to the triage nurse. I seemed to have sprained my ankle quite badly. Can I have it looked at, please? Another sprained ankle, Mr. Brown? That's 15 sprained ankles in the last six months. <laughs> uh, yes, I happen to be uh, very clumsy. <laughs> well, you know the drill, Matt. Take a seat, and since you're low priority, it could be a few hours waiting, as you know. Mm, perfect. Okay, go, just go and take a seat. Freak. I limped over to the other patients. There was a larger lady sobbing and cradling her dislocated knee. I considered starting my hunt on her. Then there was a tall hairy man who had vomit down his shirt which I found quite sexy. But then I saw her. She stood out. A weak, fragile little slut sitting on her own in the corner of the room. Our eyes met and she smiled, which is basically consent. I limped over in my, with my pretend sprained ankle and sat next to this beautiful female. She had short red hair, was quite quite thin and was wearing jeans and a shirt. Pretty little face though. <laughs> oh, you don't want to smear mints on it. Hey there, I'm Matt Brown. Uh, hey Matt, I'm Claire. Pleasure meeting you, Claire. I reached my hand out and we stared into, into each other's eyes. She shook my hand and as she did, I savored the feeling of her soft skin. As I caressed her hand, I felt myself wonder what it would feel like to shove her hands up my ass. So why are you here in emergency, Claire, if you don't mind me asking? No, it's fine. Uh, I've actually got epilepsy and I've randomly had a seizure today. I haven't had one for a while, so I thought I'd better get it checked out. What about you? Did you break your ankle or something? <laughs> no, it's just a sprain. Oh no, that sucks. How'd you do that? I had not thought of a lie as to how I sprained my ankle. I had to think on my feet. Um, uh, fuck off. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset you. No, it's fine. It's fine. Just, just don't ever ask me about my ankles. Then we spoke for hours. Conversation was flowing and getting deeper and deeper. We laughed together and she even touched my leg. My skin was starting to oil and my eyes started darting to down to her small breasts involuntarily. Uh, excuse me, Claire. Oh no, that fucking nurse had waddled over. Yes, that's me. Okay, great. Just letting you know that the doctor will see you next. Sorry for the wait. No, that's fine. Awesome. Thank you. I mumbled and hissed and whistled under my breath at that loathsome <laughs> cunt of a bitch nurse. She had just ruined my chance at a long of it you have. I had no time. I had to go for it now. L listen, Claire, I know it's only been a couple of hours, but I feel like we have a remarkably rare connection, and I think if we don't act on this connection right now, we may regret it for the rest of our lives. What, Matt? What are you saying? I'm saying we should smoosh our privates together in the bathroom right now. Claire stared at me in total shock. There was a long silence, and I thought I was about to be rejected, but then <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe I'm saying this. Fuck it, let's do it. Ah! I screamed in disbelief, and all the other patients all jumped. I grabbed Claire's hand and led her to the closest disabled toilet. I locked the door behind us and turned to face my prize. I could feel my nipples expanding and creamy liquid cheese forming in my ass crack. We lunged at each other and started kissing. I grabbed her tongue with two fingers and sucked it like it was a lollipop. I grabbed her head and smooshed it into my now fist sized nipples. I tore her clothes from her and screamed. I screamed at her naked body. I sat her on the sink and belched into her red pussy, then started licking her out like a thirsty lizard at a watering hole. Toad venom leaked from my back as my lust intensified. I freed my little brown and guided him straight into the one thing that gives my life purpose, pussy meat. The pleasure was immediate and my eyes rolled back in my head. I fucked like a high-speed sewing machine, then I vomited on her chest and started playing with it, slapping down on the pool of vomit while still thrusting forward. I wanted to make this half special and prove to myself that I will be 
the alpha haver in my family again. My mince volcano was about ready to pop. Then I noticed the light switch next to us on the wall. Then I had a thought. She is epileptic. I reached over and started turning the light off and on. Claire was enjoying the pounding I was delivering, but started squinting at the lights. I started fucking harder and switching the lights on, on and off, faster and faster, until it was just like a strobe light. Right before I started mincing, I look at Claire's face and she started to seize as she unloads into a full-blown seizure. Just as I start mincing, I feel her guts and cunt twist, contort, and tense around my exploding little brown. And it is the most intense gum I have ever come. Seizure foam cascaded out of her mouth and I leant down and snorted it all up. Her whole body seized in such a way that it was as if my she was milking my soul. I finished coming and she finished seizing. I leave the light on in the on position as I detach my little brown from her. Mince gushes onto the floor and my legs shake with satisfaction. Uh, what the fuck? I'm so confused. I barely paid any attention to her as I pulled my pants up and did my belt. M- Matt? Are you okay? Mm? Oh yeah, fine. Anyway, see you later. I leave the bathroom and walk out of the hospital no longer limping. I bounded home backwards with more power and agility than I had had for months. Matt Brown is back, baby. Mm. Baby. (laughs) Have number 55. It was a crisp winter's night. I bit into the cane toad in my hand and felt its poison splash up onto the roof of my mouth. I chewed slowly, savouring the tangy flesh, and watched the life leave its body. Once I finished my snack, I pulled my balaclava down over my face and checked my watch. It was go time. I pulled my bag over my shoulders and started scaling the fence in front of me like a gecko on meth. I grabbed the barbed wire at the top of the fence and slung my body over. I was in. I saw my target. I dropped to all fours and started running exactly how a rat runs, sticking close to the walls and stopping occasionally to sniff the air for predators. I reached my target and read the sign, Biohazard, above the bin. The padlock on the bin was strong, but it was no match for my mince. I unzipped my bag and pulled out a small jar of mince. Then I poured some direct on the padlock and watched it eat through the seal in seconds. I opened the bin and looked inside. There were many plastic bags with human remains in them. I picked one out at random. It looked like some sort of damaged human organ. Useless. I tossed it aside. I picked up another bag. This time it looked like a miscarried baby. Interesting, but not what I was after. I slung that out of the bin as well. I picked up a third bag. It was a severed breast. A breast riddled with cancer. Jackpot. I eagerly stuffed the sick tit in my bag. It was all I needed. I closed the biohazard bin turned and sprinted full pelt backwards towards the fence. While at full pace, I leapt and cleared the hospital fence. I landed and looked around. I had not been seen. I removed my balaclava and stuffed it under my foreskin. Then I bounded backwards all the way home, reaching speeds of up to 160 to 190 kilometers per hour at times. I exploded through my front door and scuttled downstairs into my basement. I opened my hidden closet and revealed my very own creation. Requiften. <laughs> I called her. (laughs) It was a human body that I'd been putting together using various discarded body parts from the hospital's surgery bins. (sighs) She was made of a human torso, which was entirely covered in cancerous breasts. Hundreds of them. She also had internal organs, two different sized legs. She had a head, but it was burnt so badly it it was hard to make out its features. I'd stolen it from the flames of a cremation months ago when I noticed it hadn't fully burnt. My plan was to have a female creature that I could have whenever I wanted so that I could practice having and becoming the top haver of my family again. My creature was nearly done. She just needed one more large tit. I retrieved the sick tit from my bag and using a blowtorch, I melted the tit flesh onto the last remaining gap on the torso. I started salivating and sweating. She was complete. (laughs) Now it just needed life. I placed a steel knife in Requiften's mouth and guided her into an electrical socket in the wall. Then I turned the power on. Electricity surged through my tit monster's body. She stiffened and spasmed and I laughed with pure arrogance. (laughs) I flicked the switch off and took a step back. Had my experiment worked? The smouldering requiffed and lay still. Ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. A heartbeat. Then bam, requiffed and sprung to life. She rolled around on the floor screaming. Ah! 
what am I? <laughs> Everything hurts. Please kill me. <laughs> I immediately started ripping my pants down. I couldn't believe that this had worked. Requifton couldn't stand because she had no arms to get off the floor with. She just rolled around on her tit torso, <laughs> screaming in agony. Ah! Ah! Screams of agony were my favorite, and I slopped my now naked body on top of this creature to stop it from rolling. Old milk oozed from a few of the tits as I methodically sucked on each tit, cancerous or not. I rubbed my balls on the burnt, screaming skull of Requifton and necked it tally. I was so erect that the skin around my dick was ripping open. I tur- turned Requifton over so she was facing the ground and slung my hard bloody cock deep into the guts of my decomposing fuck monster. I started pounding long, slow strokes in and out, deeper and deeper. My hands were feverishly groping and squeezing as many of the tits as I could. I almost ignored the burnt, screaming skull. Ah, I shouldn't exist! I watched all the tits shake in unison as my thumping intensified. Pleasure was starting to swirl in my ball bag. Then I stood Requifton up on its two legs and bent her over, grabbing its shoulders. I rammed my cock and balls, both deep into its fuck monsters cunt. Bang, 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 bang. The tits jingled and jangled everywhere as my fucking speed tripled. Then I arched my back, let out a mighty howl and chundered over 10 litres of molten hot mint into a Quifton. I heard her inside sizzle as I unplugged my now flaccid little brown. I was so relaxed and satisfied. Requifton was still screaming. Ah, Jesus, fuck me. Oh, what even am I? Ah, I chuckled to myself and dragged her back to her cupboard and locked the door. I gave her a fresh bowl of water and some food. In an hour, I'll have her again. My training has officially begun to become the best haver the world had ever seen. Have number 56. Ah. It was a beautiful morning. The sun kissed my skin as it rose above the ocean. I was casually walking along the beach, feeding pieces of broken glass to the seagulls. I loved this time of morning. No one around, just me and the seagulls. I strolled in ankle-deep water and took a shit. The splash of my poo hitting the water made me chuckle. My life was finally starting to feel normal again. I kept walking and noticed a large grey mass up ahead. I thought it must be a random rock of some sort and continued on. Then as I got closer, I realised it wasn't a rock at all. It was a beached whale. I trotted over to it like a nosy housewife and ran my hand along its massive body. I reached its head there and staring back at me was its big, beautiful eyes. The whale lives. It was a humpback whale, not fully grown, an adolescent if I had to guess, at least seven metres long and looks quite plump. I looked towards the ocean and sure enough, there was its distressed mother. I immediately shot into action and started tugging on its tail. I used all my brown strength and dug my gout-riddled heels into the sand. I pulled and tugged but the whale did not budge. It must weigh close to five tons. I scanned the beach to see if there were any other humans that could help, but it was futile. Defeated, I walked around to the head and sat down. I maintained eye contact with the whale, and its breathing started to slow. I continued stroking its head and ran my hand over its blowhole. With my pointer finger, I started circling the blowhole. Then I would dip my finger in occasionally. Hmm, interesting. I stood to get a better look. This creature actually had a sleek sexiness about it. My touching turned to groping, and I leant in and tongued at the blowhole. I could sense the whale becoming a bit uneasy, which only fueled my sexual desires. Then I cheekily ran to the front of the whale and showed it my dick. I slung my dick around in circles and made intimidating sounds. The whale's eyes widened as I climbed onto its back. I stood and looked out towards its mother. When I could see the mother looking at me, I once again showed my dick and slung it around in circles until it became hard. The mother whale was clearly starting to panic. Then I took one look down at the blowhole underneath me, jumped up in the air and dove my entire cock into it. My hips crushed down into the whale so I could get as deep down into the blowhole as possible. Then I put my hands on either side of its head and began fucking. The whale squirmed and made weird noises, but my gut slopped on and off with every thrust. I heard the mother whale making sounds and violently thrashing around in the ocean, so I gave it the finger and hurled abuse. Fuck you, cunt! I'm fucking your daughter's skull! 
call the police. I stopped fucking. I slowly turned and saw that around 30 meters away, a whole family was standing and watching me. The mother already had the phone in her hand and was calling the police, so I knew I didn't have much time. I started fucking hard and fast, and I could hear my balls slapping against the whale's back. I looked up and saw even more people running towards me. This time there were three lifeguards and around ten other people. Word had gotten out about the beached whale and people were racing down to help. Hey! What are you doing? Mind your own business! I hissed back at them. The blowhole started to split and tear and the whale's blood lubricated my shaft, allowing me to increase my fuck speed. I needed to concentrate. I had to have this whale. One of the lifeguards reaches me and grabs my arm. Get off that whale, you fucking freak! I ripped my arm away from him and vomited black soybean paste all over him. Don't touch me! The other people stopped in their tracks and looked visibly scared. I cocked my head back and continued fucking. Oh, 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 oh. People were crying and two of them even threw up. Now there were at least 30 or 40 people surrounding us. Then finally, I felt it. I locked eyes with one particularly traumatized teenage girl and began launching my mints deep into the skull of this whale. My face twisted with pleasure and I came and came but I never once broke eye contact with that teenage girl. Thick black mints <laughs> overflowed from the blowhole and seared the skin of the whale. I stood and my cock unplugged from the blowhole as I did. I heard police sirens approaching from the street. A hundred people had just witnessed me ejaculate in this dying baby whale. They were down on their knees crying and shaking, terrified of me. I couldn't risk getting arrested again though and jumped off the baby whale and ran towards the ocean. As I hit the water, I heard someone say, that poor baby humpback whale. I couldn't resist. I turned back to the crowd. It's a sperm whale now, cunt! <laughs> I reached deeper water and start swimming exactly how a dolphin would swim. With my arms by my side, I kick my legs and shoot high out of the water and I make dolphin sounds as the shocked onlookers watch. <laughs> Then bang, the mother whale engulfs me and suddenly I'm in its mouth. I try to grab onto anything I could, but it's too late. It swallows me. I still had room to move in the whale's stomach, but this was not good. However, will I get out of this mess? Oh. Have number 57. <laughs> mine, it's all mine, it's all mine. My eyes were still adjusting to the total darkness of the whale belly. I was feeling around, searching my surroundings. I grabbed something hard. It was wooden. I ran my hand along it and felt that it was quite long. Then suddenly, Buongiorno! A voice came from the darkness. I still couldn't see. Hello? Who's there? My name is Geppetto. <laughs> Geppetto file. <laughs> this whale swallowed me into my boat about a week ago while I was a fishing. Nice to meet you, Geppetto file. My name is Matt Brown. And this whale revenge swallowed me after I fuck murdered its baby on the beach. <laughs> Italiano. <laughs> Italiano. <laughs> Geppetto and I laughed at our situation and got to talking. Turns out that he was having family issues too. His son had run away and he hadn't seen him since. I told him my situation with my brother, freeing me from jail and how he's the top haver of the family now, and we connected. We had a lot in common. Geppetto even had his own little store where he handmade wooden toys. Sex toys. His store was called Geppetophile's Sex Toys. My eyes had fully adjusted to the dark now and I could even make out the features of Geppetto. He was an older Italian man and was sitting in his small wooden dinghy. Suddenly the whale's mouth opened and water came rushing in. We got swept towards the back of the stomach and then the mouth slammed shut again. Are you alright Geppetto? Then a third voice chimed in from the other side of the stomach. Geppetto? Are you in here? A Pinocchio! Screamed Geppetto. Geppetto and Pinocchio ran to each other and embraced. There was something strange about Pinocchio. He looked a bit thin. As they embraced, I waded through the water towards him. Once I was close enough, I could see that Pinocchio was actually a fucking wooden doll. And strangely, his nose was shaped like an Pinocchio, oh. you came to save me! Said Geppetto excitedly. I know we've had our issues, Dad, but I just want us to be a normal family. But only on one condition, Dad. Oh, Italiano! Anything for you, Pinocchio! <laughs> you have to stop using me for What? Did I just hear that correctly? Hehe, <laughs> Mr. Brown, this is between me and my wooden doll, okay? Uh, Pinocchio, please, you are made for 
I know, but somehow I'm conscious now, and that makes me feel things. And for some reason, my nose grows when I lie. Oh, Pinocchio, just to shatter your eyes. No, Dad! Stop! Geppetto reaches forwards and started fondling Pinocchio's <laughs> nose. He grabbed a hold of it and pulled Pinocchio closer to him. Let go, Geppetto! Oh, maybe you should stop, Geppetto. This feels wrong. I grabbed Geppetto's shoulder. Geppetto slapped my hand away. He's a fucking <laughs> dog that I made, Matt Brown. He is a mind to f all I want. Now let me be. <laughs> he was right, but I couldn't stand by while this happened. This wasn't an ordinary <laughs> doll. It was living. I was going to have to fight to save this doll, and fight the only way I knew how. <laughs> Fuck fighting. Geppetto had already inserted Pinocchio's <laughs> nose straight up his <laughs> and was using him like a Please, no! It smells like shit! I pulled my pants down and slapped my little brown. It's go time, buddy. He shot up immediately, fully erect. I ran up to Geppetto and put both hands on the back of his head. <clears throat> with all my might, I thrust forwards with my hips while pulling his head into me. My dick explodes into his mouth and smashes into the back of his throat. Geppetto is stunned, but manages to hang on to Pinocchio and keeps his nose. I start fucking Gepp Geppetto's skull hard and fast. Geppetto gags with every forward thrust and bites down hard on my throbbing brown. <laughs> ah! I scream in pain. Geppetto looks up into my eyes with my cock still in between his teeth and I ram my thumbs into his eyes and push his eyeballs back into his skull. <laughs> I felt my thumbs pierce deep into his eyeballs, yet still Geppetto manages to keep Pinocchio. I try and thrust forwards, but Geppetto's teeth peel away my foreskin. I was trapped. Nothing was working. And now I couldn't fuck as Geppetto had his teeth around my little brown. Then it came to me. Pinocchio's nose. Lie, Pinocchio! You need to lie! <laughs> what? Just trust me! Lie! Pinocchio looked confused, but did what I said. One plus one is three! Pinocchio's nose grew, grew a little while still inside of Geppetto, and Geppetto's body flinched a little in pain. One plus one is three! One plus one is three! Pinocchio's nose started growing quickly and burrowed up through Geppetto's insides. One plus one is three! One plus one is three! The c*** nose shot through Geppetto's heart and up through his neck and finally cracked through Geppetto's skull bone. I felt Geppetto's bite relax and removed my thumbs from his eyes. He was dead. His body went limp and Pinocchio removed his c*** nose from him. I have to make sure he's dead, Pinocchio. Turn around. Pinocchio was clearly shaken, but did as, did as he was told. I plugged my bloody, shredded little brown into Geppetto's ass and hammered away like a meth rabbit until I drained my mince-filled balls into the old Italian man. The mince ate away at him until he was completely dissolved. Fucking Italian cunt. Pinocchio turned to me. You saved me, my bro. How can I ever repay you? You can help by getting us out of this fucking whale. Then I leant forwards and snapped Pinocchio's meter-long <laughs> nose back down to a regular length. You got a deal, Matt Brown. <laughs> Have number 58. Uh, 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 rela relax. Uh. <laughs> It was day five inside of this whale, and I'd had a fucking gutful. Pinocchio had been trying to light a fire to make the whale sneeze, but it did not work. I got impatient and squeezed his little fucking wooden throat. Uh, Matt, please! I, I can't breathe! You promised me a way out of this whale, Pinocchio. Just as I was deciding whether to snap Pinocchio's neck or not, a giant spear exploded through the whale's stomach, barely missing me. The spear was so massive that it went through the entire length of the whale and stayed lodged inside. The whale began to panic. It swam erratically, thrashing its tail, throwing myself and Pinocchio around like a newborn babies in a dryer. The whale weakened and eventually I felt its heart stop beating. Curiously, instead of sinking, the whale began to rise up, almost like something was reeling us in. I'm so scared, Matt Brown! Snap out of it! I slapped him hard to bring him to his senses. Then I slapped him again because it made me feel like God. We were certain the whale was out of the water now and suspended above it. Then the whale suddenly started falling, us included, after a short that dropped onto a hard surface. I used Pinocchio to break my fall. Then, after a few moments, a huge blade entered the stomach and began cutting along the side of the whale, and the whale's inside started pouring out, us included. Next thing I know, I'm on my hands and knees, crawling out of the whale's stomach, and the sun is shining, shining on me for the first time in five days. My eyes take a second to adjust, and then, there, standing in front of us staring, were about 40 Japanese men. Whalers. The whale we were inside had been harpooned and caught by Japanese whalers.
Pinocchio stood next to me, shaking. Are they... Are they friendly? Usually not, no. They might think that we're Greenpeace activists and they might kill us. Stay here and don't move until I tell you to, you little wooden cunt. Pinocchio nervously nodded and I began slowly walking towards the whalers with my hands up. The whalers all took a step back and started speaking nervously amongst themselves. I stopped walking. Hello. I'm Matt Brown. That whale ate us. Please take me and my wooden sex doll home to Australia. There was silence at first. Then one Japanese man stepped forward. We can take you to Australia. But first, you pay money. Damn it. This is going to be harder than I thought. I can pay you when we get to Australia. Now. You pay now or you get off boat. I looked back at Pinocchio. The pussy was shivering like a high-speed vibrator. I didn't have any money. I had nothing. Nothing of value on me. We were fucked. Fucked. Hang on. Fucked. That's it. I'll pay them in fuck. It was a long shot, but I could see a fair few of them checking me out already. I have no money. But I can pay in other ways. And as I say it, I undo my pants and they drop to my feet, leaving me standing there in a shirt and undies. The Japanese men murmured to themselves and fell quiet. What do you mean? I was going to have to offer myself to them fully. But first I turned to Pinocchio. Hey, Pinocchio, I want you to watch every single second of this. Don't you dare take your eyes away from me during this. This is your fault, and now I have to do this to save us. Pinocchio nodded sheepishly, didn't say anything, and continued to weep. I turned back towards the Japanese and simply dropped to my knees and slid my shirt off. Then I opened my mouth wide and jingled my man breasts up and down. The Japanese men all looked completely shocked. Then... Suddenly, the 70 or so Japanese men started sprinting in at me, tearing their clothes off as they went. They were all fully erect already, each erect cocked, hard but tiny, no bigger than my my thumb. I could sense the electricity in the air from the moment I could see them. They're all out at sea for months on end without even seeing a woman. They have so much lust built up in them that as soon as they saw my white, meaty, pale reddish skin shining in the sun, they became unreasonably horny. I closed my eyes and prepared my mind for what was about to happen. Then bang, a wave of naked, fully erect Japanese men swarmed onto my body like a plague of bees on their queen. Little cocks hammered against my body and worked their way into my anal cavity and I relaxed my jaw as another 20 cocks fought for a spot in my mouth. I was getting ripped and dragged in every direction. Some were biting chunks of flesh off of me. I was fucked up and down and thrashed around. I was tossed and flung and thrown and ripped and torn and bashed. I eventually stopped fighting it. I went with it and arched my back and stretched my ring to allow for some more tiny cocks to drill into it. I sucked their cocks deeply and eagerly, and every now and then I glanced at Pinocchio to make sure he was still watching. He was. I maintained eye contact with him as I sucked one cock to the next, moving quickly through each cock. Suck, 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 suck. Finally, some of the Asian cocks started to pop little cheese strands out. This motivated me, and man, I rolled my hips back and forth faster and fucked back at the whalers. Pop, 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 more cheese cheese strands filled my ass and were smeared on my back. Soon enough, all the little whalers had finished with me. My cheese-covered face stared at Pinocchio, and as the last one drilled away at my ass, I minced all over myself. Pinocchio's face was now expressionless, almost like he was dead inside. I was lying on the deck, covered in cheese and totally exhausted. I felt quite filled and sore, but actually quite enjoyed the experience. My first getting a train run on me by Japanese whalers. I dragged myself over to Pinocchio and as I looked into his bloodshot eyes it looked like his soul was dead (laughs) we got to Australia now said one of the Japanese whalers thank you boys I say and exhausted I pass out have number 59 pinch the tip takes me back I woke up, still on the boat. It was night time now. I sat up and my body still ached from the vicious fuck attack delivered to me by those Japanese whalers this morning. I turned to look at Pinocchio and he's still just staring straight ahead, expressionless. He was clearly still very traumatized from seeing what the whalers did to me. 
I decide to have a little bit of fun and pick on him a bit. Hey Pinocchio, remember when those two Japanese men cheesed in my mouth and I started chewing it and it made them throw up? <laughs> Pinocchio suddenly stood up and without even acknowledging my hilarious teasing, he began power walking towards the edge of the whaling ship. Hey Pinocchio, what are you doing? Still he ignored me. Sensing something was up, I stood. Pinocchio reached the edge of the ship and turned around to face me. He pulled out a nail gun and held it against his head. I'm sorry, Matt Brown, but I can't live with what I've seen. Pinocchio, no! Bang! Pinocchio shot and a nail speared through his wooden skull. It nearly shot completely through and sap started pouring from his wooden skull. I walked over and I watched the life drain from him. Pinocchio had, a fine, had been a fine companion. And so I gave him an ocean funeral and threw him off the edge of the ship into the water below. I realized that without Pinocchio, I would be dead. He saved my life. When I reflected deep within myself, I re realized my actions directly influenced Pinocchio's decision to end his life. And I thought to myself, oh well, the next morning the ship finally arrived to Australia. I said goodbye to my handsome whalers and depart from the ship. One thing I need to do before I head home is cleanse my soul. I had a lot to be grateful for after surviving, living in a whale stomach for many, many days. I headed straight to church. It was time for my once every ten years confession. I entered the church. There were around eight people scattered around sitting and praying. As quietly as I could, I strolled past them and entered the confessional. It was dark, but I heard the priest speak from the other confessional. What brings you to my church? He said. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. How long until your last confession, my son? Ten years. Tell your sins openly and honestly. Okay, he goes. Father, I've been very bad. Very, very naughty. Yes, please, go on. I've been thinking very naughty thoughts. And I've been doing very naughty things. I understand, but please, try and give as much detail as you can. I think about sex a lot, Father. It's always on my mind. I get overwhelming urges to have almost everything. Mm, okay, how often are you thinking these thoughts? Every second of every day, Father. I'm thinking about it right now, in fact. The priest fell silent. It's almost like my brain is actually just one large cock. After a few more moments silence, the priest finally spoke. <laughs> so, so what are you thinking right now? I'm picturing you bursting in through this door and tonguing at my necks. <laughs> then, then, then what? I could hear the priest's voice intensify slightly. <laughs> then I'm thinking about making a nest in my arsehole out of my chest hair so your cock has a comfortable place to sleep. I heard the priest shuffling around the confessional. Then I'm thinking what it would feel like to have your blessed cream ooze from my arsehole after you fill me to the brim. The priest stood and I could hear him battling with his urges. You, you need to stop this. This is incredibly sinful. I want to feel your flesh pulsing in me. The priest couldn't take it. He kicked open his door and ran to my side of the confessional. I stood and opened the door and greeted him just as the priest lunged at me. We crashed back into my confessional, pashing with tongue. The priest was in his mid-sixties and his tongue felt dry and hard. I eagerly accepted into, into my mouth and pulled his soft body into mine. I grabbed his ass with both my hands and squeezed it powerfully. My thumb broke through his ass skin and the priest pulled back in pain. Oh, oh. Then he rocketed straight back to kissing me. I grabbed his short white hair and pulled his head back to expose his neck. Then I hungrily sucked and licked it. The priest moaned in pleasure and clawed at my back. Oh, oh, oh. I opened my eyes and saw that the other eight people in the church were all standing and staring right at us. They looked totally shocked, which made me rock hard. Let's give them a show. I bend the priest over and lift up his priest dress thing. With one hand I part his ass cheeks and drive my painfully erect little brown straight down the middle of his colon. With my other hand I point at the eight people watching. Oh goodness me! The priest struggled with the depth and width of my little brown but that didn't stop me. I began fucking savouring the sensation of feeling oh. his tight rim wrapped around my cock. I grabbed both of the priest's wrists and pulled him into me with every 
forward thrust. Some of the people watching started screaming. I felt my gills widen and I vomited lymph nodes onto his back. I reached around and started grabbing at the priest's junk. The priest was pushing back into me so my cock would go deeper and deeper. I had the priest's testicles and dick in my hand and started wanking them all together. The priest stoned his head back to me and I managed to vomit a few more lymph nodes into his mouth. Then we kissed with such passion that we both started crying. By now six of the eight people had sprinted from the church and the two remaining were both crying. Nearly done! I scream at them. Arch your back, father. The priest did, the priest did arch and I started thump fucking the cunt while I still wanked his cock and balls all at once. Mints welled up in my balls and exploded out of me. I came so intensely that I accidentally ejaculated four of my chromosomes. The priest started coming to and we both moaned and writhed in pleasure. I retracted my little brown before my mints could kill him and finished mincing on the floor of the confessional. The prince left a tasty load in my hand and I sucked my fingers while staring at the last remaining person in the church. Satisfied, we dropped to our knees. <sighs> Have all my sins been forgiven, father? <sighs> we will both burn in hell for this. I can't wait, cunt. <laughs> I slap the priest on the back and walk out of the church. I love my confessions. I bound home backwards at a leisurely pace and enjoy a nice warm bowl of piss. It's good to be home. Have number sixty. Well, for friction. I was bathing in hooker blood and sucking on frozen steak chunks. I slid down so my head is completely submerged in the hooker blood. I feel the blood creep into my nostrils and I breathe in. It spills onto my lungs and I chuckle to myself. <laughs> this is living. I feel relaxed, strong, healthy and powerful. I was finally ready to get my life back on track and become my family's primary haver. It was time to take Queston down. That cunt had been ruling for far too long. I get out of the bath and wait until nightfall. Tonight I attack and reclaim what's mine. The clock strikes midnight and it was time. I slither out from the foxhole where I lived. The cool night breeze kisses my skin and I sniff the air to get my bearings. <laughs> I sorted through all the different scents and finally locked onto Questions. I face backwards in the direction I want to go and begin bounding. <clears throat> I bounded backwards through the forest, on the highway, and even over a river. I reached speeds of over 160 kilometers an hour, which was a new PB for me. This was the strongest I'd ever been. I arrived on the outskirts of Questions house and quietly observed to get as much intel as possible. All the lights were off. Everyone must be sleeping. I get closer. I peek through the window. My eyes dart around the room like a meth rat. No one in the lounge room. I creep to the next window and once again have a peek. This reminded me of my peeping Tom days and I got a bit excited. I stare into the next room and sure enough, it's Queston's bedroom. I could hear him in the shower in his ensuite and I could see the lights spilling into, be into the bedroom from under the ensuite door. I quietly open the window and crawl in. I sit on a chair and stretch my cock in and out a bit in preparation. My teats start lactating and I ruffle my feathers. The shower turns off and Queston opens the ensuite door, wearing nothing but a towel. He steps into his bedroom and pauses. He looks up and our eyes meet. <coughs> I scream as I lunge forwards, knees first. I aimed my knees straight at Queston's fucking skull. My knees slam into Queston's head and I hear his skull crack. His body goes limp and we crash onto the floor. Queston was unconscious on the floor. I scramble on top of him. My mouth latches onto his tit and I begin sucking hard. Queston regains consciousness and I see him lift his fucked head with his shit long black hair. He sees me and by this stage I've sucked his entire left half of his chest in my mouth and down my throat. He grabs my head and tries to push me down off of him. He was so weak from being knocked unconscious from my knee bomb. My little brown is now rock hard and I feel it slither in between Queston's legs. Queston fights weakly, but I'm far too strong. Uh, so stop that. I forfeit. Just please don't have me. Queston begins to beg and I know I had him. I have now sucked his entire chest into my mouth and it was stretching the skin on his sides so much that it started to tear. My little brown glides into Queston's ass and starts laying eggs. I roll my hips forwards and backwards 
and my testicles start purring like a cat. Creston starts punching down on my head as now I've sucked his entire front of Creston's body into my mouth. <laughs> Creston starts screaming in pain as his skin starts to tear from his body. My fucking intensifies and my dick starts to spin as I thrust. My blood turns to cream and my body hair turns to barbed wire. I'm about to mince. I keep sucking at Creston's front and finally his skin gives way. His entire chest, including his pectoral muscles, slurp up into my mouth just as I begin mincing. Bang! <laughs> then everything went quiet, went black. I felt my body slump forwards and Creston's chest cascaded out of my mouth as I could no longer suck. I opened my eyes and managed to muster enough strength to turn my head. Standing in the doorway, holding a baseball bat, was Choir. She was breathing heavily and had one of her breasts exposed. You did not know I was visiting, did you, Matthew? I was too weak to talk and felt blood pouring out of my head. I grunted. That's the last have you'll ever have, Matthew. Goodbye. Choir stepped forward and swung the bat directly at my head. Everything went black again as she connected. Bang! 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 Hit after hit, Choir mashed my skull. Then I felt like I was falling, falling and falling. <laughs> then I slammed onto the ground. It was hot, very hot. My vision returns and my senses come back to me. I hear screaming and burning. I sit up. I'm surrounded by fire and people screaming in pain. I see a creature walk towards me. <laughs> Welcome to hell, Matthew Brown! <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Number 61. Oh, Dad. Dad's around me. I looked around hell and couldn't believe what I was seeing. Flames everywhere. Through the flames, I would see things. I saw a skinned baby being rolled in salt. I saw a man vomiting up a corpse, legs first. I watched two men having their eyelids cut off with scissors by a half-human, half-walrus creature. I watched a demon injecting maggots into the bloodstream of a screaming real estate agent. The heat was overwhelming. Get up, Matt Brown! We've been looking forward to meeting you, said the demon. The creature speaking, speaking to me had the body and legs of a fat pig and seven human arms. Its head was a goat. Did I really die? Afraid so, Matt Brown. But don't worry, hell's a different place for people as evil as you are. What do you mean? You're a VIP, Matt Brown. Follow me, I'll show you around. This place ain't so bad. I followed this pig goat creature. My skin went bright pink from the heat. We walked through hell, and people everywhere were being tortured in the most gruesome ways. My little brown was slithering around in my pants, wanting to play. I was led to a large, dirty castle. The goat creature opened the door, and then the music hit my ears. Aussie hip-hop was loudly playing, and there was a mix of hundreds of people and creatures dancing and fucking and partying together. It was a huge room with incredibly high ceilings. There was a bar and lots of crazy lighting. Welcome to VIP hell, Matthew Brown! Hey, everyone! The music stopped and everyone turned to us. Look who's finally joined us! It's Matthew Gregory Brown! The whole place erupted with cheering and a bunch of the people and creatures ran over to welcome me. Oh, man, we've heard so much about your work. You're a fucking madman, man. Is that the baby whale, fucker? Such a warm welcome. I felt like I would truly belonged. Is that fucking Matty Brown, cunt? I recognize that voice and through the crowd I see a familiar face. Julian, what are you doing here? Ha ha ha, you! You know me, can't I just get around? I've got a fair few of me mates down here, so I come here for benders on weekends and that. <laughs> Wait, you can leave hell whenever you want? Yeah, fuck no, I can't. I'm a fucking demon, cunt. Don't tell anyone, bud. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking, um, what you called? Uh, what you fucking call? Or I fucking, um, travel between, like, um, dimensions and shit. Special demon power given to us straight from Satan. <laughs> you, you. That's incredible. How does one become a demon? <laughs> you I become a demon, man. Demons are born demons. Demons like, um, what's it called? Like Satan's, um, kids come. Yeah, he's pretty much more dad, isn't that? So, you're saying I can never, I can never leave? 
Cunt, fuck no, cunt. But what would you want to fucking leave, bud? It's fucking sick here, cunt. Heaps shit if you aren't VIP, but with all the shit you've done up there, you'll set for life down here, cunt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so you're saying for me there's no downsides to being in hell if you're a VIP? No, you just fuck, fucking party, party all day and all, cunt. Oh, but there is one shit thing that even VIPs have to do. But it's only once a day, and it's only, even for you guys, but it's only once a day. It's nothing. Well, what is it? You have to let Satan fuck you to death in the most gruesome, horrifying, extremely painful way imaginable. But then you die and you just wake up here again and keep partying. The rack in here is safe for you, account. I can get you something if you want. Do you want line? So every day I can party non-stop, but then be fucked to death by Satan. Yeah, right, it's non-stop partying. And then you get, just get killed once. Like, just once. Just once a day. I'm pretty good mates with Satan. I could tell him to go easy on you if you want. So he gets to have me. Every day, for eternity. Yeah, 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 but did you hear what I said about the parties and that? It's a fucking sick deal. Yeah. Thanks, Julian. Yeah! Yeah, I'll catch you around, okay? I'll go dark web pingers too if you want. Just come back. Just come back to me if you want dark web pingers, come. Julian left and my reality was sinking in. I would spend my days in hell and get fucked to death every day by the most evil creature in existence. That's not good. I watch the VIPs dancing and doing drugs. I can't live like this. I don't party. I stalk, hunt, and have. I had to find a way out of hell. Then I heard screaming from the other side of the room. Satan appeared. He was flying above everyone and had a massive erection. He was pointing at people and creatures in the crowd and they would start screaming immediately. He was about to start having. He flew down cock first and shattered the skull of a VIP. He flew back up and power vomited skin on the crowd below. The VIP shrieked and ran for cover. Then he looked straight at me. My heart stopped. Mr. Brown, what a pleasant surprise. Satan himself was addressing me. I was frozen in horror as Satan drifted over to me. His erection was throbbing, and I could hear it. Ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. It twitched with every knob beat. Nice of you to finally join us down here. N- n- nice, nice to meet you, Mr. Satan. Please, Matt, call me Lucifer. He landed next to me and started circling me. He ran his long, hard finger along my soft, pink skin. He looked exactly as you would imagine. A huge red monster with horns and yellow eyes and teeth, and one massive, thick, devil dick. Even my little brown was shaking in fear at the sight of it. You're already infamous down here, Mr. Brown. The most VIP of a VIP. But as I'm sure you're aware, as much good work as it did on Earth, this is hell, and I've got a reputation to uphold. Satan grabs my ass, and I feel his fingers pierce my ass cheeks like a hot knife through butter. I flinch, but I don't dare make a sound. Satan leant forward and whispered in my ear, I'm going to enjoy having the greatest haver in history. He licked my neck. Then he addressed the crowd. Shall I have Mr. Brown in front of you all? Shall I take out all of my have energy into this one have and spare everyone else on one have just this day? The VIPs immediately started screaming and cheering. Have Matt Brown! Have Matt Brown! (laughs) The chant started. The crowd has spoken, Matthew Brown. I closed my eyes. Then I feel Satan bite into my shoulder and rip a large chunk of flesh off like it was nothing. The pain was indescribable. I start screaming, but Satan jams his whole hand down my throat. I feel him grab a hold of my tonsils and rip them out like band-aids. I drop to my knees, and Satan grabs either side of my head. Then he forcefully slams his huge devil dick into my mouth. It snaps all of my teeth out and breaks my jaw on impact. The devil then starts fucking my stretched open mouth, and my mouth skin starts tearing along my cheek as the devil's dick expands. The devil then moves his thumbs to over my eyes and presses them deep into my skull. I lose vision and the pain is making me lose consciousness. He presses my eyes deep into my skull while still powerfully fucking my head. Here we go, Brown! Screams the devil. Satan makes sure that I don't fully lose consciousness so that I can still feel everything. Then it happens. The devil begins ejaculating. His devil juice shot out and collided with the back of my throat. It was burning me and the smell was putrid. I kept jetting it. It kept jetting out of his dick and started burning a hole through the back of my head. The searing pain made me panic and I lash out but the devil was far too strong. The hot hot cum jet broke through the back of my skull and the devil pulled my head further onto his dick. His dick continued through the hole and my, through, through the hole in my skull and his hot cum had just made. My, my head was now threaded through his entire dick. 
the devil finally retracted his dick and let my body collapse to the floor. I knew I was moments from death, but as I bled out from my injuries, the last thing I remember is feeling the devil pissing on my back as I died and everyone <laughs> laughing. <laughs> then pop, I woke up in the exact spot I'd just woken up when I arrived. I need to get out of here. Have number 62. I sat up once again in hell. This time no creature came to greet me, but I knew my way back to the VIP castle party. I stood, and the pain from my Satan fuck still remained. I scooped some Satan spunk out of my colon and slapped it on the ground. Then I started walking. Again, as I looked around, it was nothing but torture and screams. I kind of liked it. I made it back to the VIP castle and banged on the door. Paul Walker answered with a munted face. Yo, Matt Brown. Satan fucking nailed you yesterday, man. Holy shit. Not as bad as that car accident nailed you, though, Paul. I pushed the cunt aside and walked in. Again, loud Aussie hip-hop filled the air, and people were partying in the middle. I looked to my left. Yeah! Matty Rare! <laughs> I watched Julian sucking off Kobe Bryant with four heroin needles <laughs> protruding from his arm. Steve Irwin was circling Amy Winehouse, who was desperately trying to suck some spilt vodka off the ground. Steve Irwin, wa- Steve Irwin was quickly undoing his belt, staring straight at Amy's asshole. You're right, mate. You're right. There was alcohol, drugs, and sex as far as the eye could see. I walk up to the bar. What do you recommend? I ask the creature bartender. He slides me a plate with a heroin needle, ten lines of coke, five different types of painkiller tablets, a bottle of vodka, five acid tabs, and a meth-filled pipe on it. I look at the creature and he nods. Do it all together. You can't OD in hell. I pause momentarily. Fuck it. It is hell, after all. I consume the whole plate of drugs and alcohol, except for the meth. I'd only ever do meth if someone gave me a thousand dollars for it. The mix of the drugs completely alters my state of mind. I'm relaxed and euphoric all at once. Within minutes, I'm completely impaired. I turn back to the party and decide to join in. I storm into the middle and see a beautiful lady. She had flowing black hair and stunningly pretty face. I groped her tits and pissed on her legs and moved on to the next. Two human creatures with horse heads were dancing together. I eagerly grope in between their legs and show them my dick. My little brown was painfully hard and pre-mince was fizzing from its end. The two horse humans look at each other confused. I bang their fucking heads together and start fucking any holes I can find in their bodies. I squish their skin together on their backs and ram my dick in between the folds. A fucked, a fucked looking eagle thing flies over me and I shoot my arm up and grab its leg. It lifts me away from the horse humans and midair I start tearing its feathers out and stuffing them up my ass. The fucked eagle thing started flying out of control. I firmly maneuver my fizzing cock into the eagle's ass as it slams against a wall. The wall slam drives my fleshy fuckstick so deep into the eagle that I feel its ass tear wide open. We crash to the ground hard. I fuck down at the eagle thing for a bit and then turn back to the crowd. My vision is blurry from the heroin coursing through my veins, but I see a crumpled up heap of something on the ground. I drop to my knees and stab at it with my dick. I don't even know what it is, but I manage to find some sort of hole in this thing and start fucking that too. Suddenly, I hear screaming from across the room. I shit myself and pull my little brown avil out of whatever the fuck that is. Then I see him. (laughs) Satan has made his way into the room, and he was fucking all the VIPs to death. I see Michael Jackson attempting to moonwalk away from Satan, but Satan appears behind Michael Jackson and with a huge backswing slings his thumb straight up Michael Jackson's ass. (laughs) Michael Jackson drops to his hands and knees and lets Satan drill him into the ground, pounding harder and harder until Michael Jackson was just a pool of mashed body. Then Satan turns and sees me. I'm still so fuckered I can barely process what's happening. Just let him fuck you, my friend. It's over the v- quickest way that way. I slowly turn and see that Hitler was standing next to me. Oh, Tomorrow, when you wake, come and find me. We can work together to find a play out of here. I lean in and kiss Hitler. The kiss was so perfect. <laughs> just the right amount of tongue and just a little bit of lip sucking. Hitler pulls away. See you soon, my friend. 
Hitler sprints away and now Satan is standing in front of me. My little brown is so erect that the skin on my shaft is beginning to burst like an overcooked frankfurt. Nice to see you've joined in today. I saw you have a few of the creatures who live here. Very impressive. I can barely understand him because of the cocktail of drugs I'm on. Why don't you get fucked, Lucifer? And then I spat in Satan's face. <laughs> A smile crept onto his face. Then bang! His hand shot out and grabbed my neck. He lifted me in the air so that we were eye level, then lowered me onto his massively dick. His massive, his absolutely massive dick. It tore open my ass and I screamed in agony. I didn't dare break eye contact though. I stared straight into his black, soulless eyes as his grip around my neck tightened and as his hip thrusting became violent. He fucked my dangling body as he held it in place and I could feel him mixing my internal organs with his cock. Then he slammed me onto the ground and got on top. Powerful, long fucks plowed into my ass, all the while Satan continued to choke me. I was blacking out when I felt it. Satan began coming. I still maintained eye contact and could see his face contort with pleasure. And then I felt his ejaculate pouring into my anal cavity. It burst through my intestinal walls and started filling my guts. Hot, foamy ejaculate then worked its way up into my lungs and started gushing up my throat. I began power vomiting Satan's creamy cum back into Satan's mouth. He willingly swallowed it from Satan's dick into me and out of my mouth, then back into Satan's mouth. This was the freakiest shit I'd ever done. Then moments later, I was dead again. I woke up where I started my journey once again. Fuck! No partying this time. I need to stay focused. Have... Number 63. <laughs> I sat up with the taste and smell of Satan's cock in my mouth and my asshole pulsed with pain. I power vomited Satan's spunk all over a passing creature. I can't go on like this. It was time to get out of hell. I shook my body like a wet dog and felt determined. I power walked to the VIP castle and kicked the door open. The sound of the raging party hits me. Yeah! I immediately see Julian dipping his testicles in and out of Princess Diana's open mouth. Robin Williams was being sucked off by Box Boy's career next to him. I can't get distracted again. I scan through the party and try and spot him. He's still not here. I power walk around the perimeter. Still no Hitler. Where the fuck is he? I see Olivia Newton-John standing on her own in the corner and I approach her. Hey, have you seen Hitler? Hitler? What? I just got here. What exactly is this? This is hell. I recommend you get as fucked up as you can on drugs to make Satan fucking you to death bearable. What? This, this is hell? Wait, wait, what? What about Satan? Please, this has to be some sort of mistake. I'm a good person. I don't- Shut up! I turn and storm off. I realize I haven't looked in the bathroom yet. I run in and sure enough, standing there I see Hitler and Sean Connery snorting cocaine together. Finally, Brown. I have been vetting for you. Hitler offers me a line of coke. No, no, not for me. I need to stay sober for this. Now, how can we get out of here? Okay, okay, straight to business, Mr. Brown. I love it. <laughs> the information I'm about to tell you did not come from me, okay? And first you must agree to something before I tell you. Okay, w what is it? I will explain exactly how to get out of hell. But I want you to let me have you once after I explain. You want, want to, to have me? But why? Because, Mr. Brown, you are the most beautiful man I have ever seen. Your presence alone makes my noodle hard. I look down and see Hitler has a powerful erection. Sean Connery looks on nervously and does a three gram line in one go. I started thinking, being halved by Hitler once is better than being halved by Satan daily for eternity. You have a deal, Hitler. We shake hands firmly. Now, how do I escape hell? Okay, first, you need demon powers. And the only way to obtain demon power is, is by having a demon. Once you have a demon, its powers are transferred onto you. Once you have those powers, you have the tools to defeat Satan. A demon? They're incredibly powerful. How can I ever have a demon? If I were you, I would choose the weakest demon available. One you have a chance against. 
Weak demons? Is there such a thing? Yes, Mr. Brown. The one who uses that toilet. Hitler nods towards the disabled toilet. <laughs> You will know him once you see him. He is the only demon that goes to that toilet to do poopoos. Good luck, Mr. Brown. Hitler then grabs Sean Connery's ass and they both left. Still slightly confused as to who Hitler meant, I walk into the disabled toilet and hide behind the door. My heart was racing so fast it made a humming sound. I take a deep breath and start to focus for the battle of a lifetime. I wait and I wait. Every time the toilet doors opened, my balls constricted with anticipation. Hours went by and I started getting, getting concerned. Surely Satan will be here to have me soon. Then I heard what sounded like rolling wheels. I pressed my soft body right up against the wall of the toilet, flattening myself like a blue tongue lizard. The wheeling got closer and closer. The wheeling slowly made its way into the disabled toilet. I hid behind the door until this demon was all the way inside. Then bang! I slam the door shut and lock it behind me. Then there, sitting in front of me, was none other than Stephen Hawking's! What are you doing? This is the disabled toilet, and you look fully able. Stephen Hawking's? You're, you're a demon? Stephen Hawking's remained silent, staring at me with his munted-looking face. Who told you that? He finally asks. It doesn't matter, but I am sorry for what I'm about to do. I grab Hawkins by the throat and lift him out of his wheelchair easily. I pull him into me and tongue at his teeth and the crevices on his face. He tasted like salt-crusted fish. His limp body dangled as I held him, and with my other hand I undo his pants. I kick his wheelchair out of the way and bend Stephen over the toilet with his ass facing me. My dick wasn't even hard. I had to thumb it into Stephen's ass. Once inside, my flaccid cock slowly began swelling. I couldn't believe how easy this was. <clears throat> then I felt a hand on my dick. I looked down. Not so fast, sir, old chap. Stephen had turned his head and had grabbed my dick to stop it swelling. What? How is this possible? Look, mate, I'm going to have to tell you my deepest, darkest secret now, and then I'm going to have to kill you for good. You won't even exist in hell anymore. I don't actually have that LAS disease. I can walk and I can talk perfectly fine. I'm really just really fucking lazy. I woke up one day and couldn't be fucked walking. So I said it was hard to walk and they got me a wheelchair. Then people kept talking and talking to me and I couldn't be fucked talking back one day. So I pretended that I couldn't fucking talk anymore. Everyone did everything for me and that's exactly what I wanted. Laziness is one of the seven deadly sins, sloth you see. So I ended up here, anyway. I'm gonna kill you now. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. His true voice was truly shocking. All along, Stephen Hawking wasn't sick. He was just really lazy. So even his face muscles were drooping. So lazy. Unbelievable. Stephen pulled my flaccid cock out of him and stood and turned around. He punched me in the face and my head banged against the wall. I fall to the floor and Stephen starts booting me in the body and face. You dirty fucking pig, yelled Stephen. He was still incredibly strong despite his small frame. I tried multiple times to stand but his kicks were so powerful, I managed to grab onto one of his legs and hold on for dear life. Then I see Julian walk into the bathroom. Julian, you have to help me! Ha <laughs> fucking Matt, Matty, what the fuck are you doing here, cunt? Stephen Hawking is trying to kill me! <laughs> Julian's face turns serious and he sprints at Stephen. He pulls out a can of spray paint and starts graffitiing Stephen's face. Stephen clutches at his face and screams. I grab Stephen's other leg and pull him to the ground. I remember that Julian too is a demon and so his strength must match Stevens. Hold him, Julian. I'm gonna fuck his little ass. Ha ha ha, you! Fucking Matty, you! Woo! Julian grabs at Stevens' arms and pins them to the ground. Stop, Julian! You don't know what you're doing! I'm a de de whack! I plunge my elbow straight into Stephen's face before he can finish his sentence. I'm rock hard now and quickly guide my little brown deep into Stephen's ass. As I fuck with my hips, I strangle Stephen hard with my hands <laughs> and Julian continues to hold his arms down. <laughs> fuck, he's strong for a disabled guy, eh? <laughs> or oh, give me a turn when you're done, but Julian clearly still didn't know Stephen's secret that he is a demon. The head of my cock sprouts two more small cocks 
cox while I fuck. The small cocks burrow deep into Stephen's body in opposite directions. There was no escaping me now. My eyes bulged as I realized I was going to win. I slowed my fucking and changed to deep, slow, long thrusts. Stephen's face was blue from my choking now, and his eyes were filled with panic and blood. I lean down while I'm fucking him and suck on his bottom teeth. Then I suck on his tongue. I suck harder and harder. I suck it so hard it rips and I swallow it. I felt my balls start to vibrate. It was nearly time. Stephen was still fighting hard, but Julian was far too strong. I start fucking short, fast little fuck thrusts, and as I mince, I scream into Stephen's ear. Ah! My mince cascades from my cock and two small cocks and starts filling every part of his body. My mince enters his bloodstream and turns his heart into a cream donut. I stare into his eyes and watch the life leave his body. Then... Stephen's corpse vomits directly onto my face. The vomit enters my mouth, and I feel my body absorb it. It was Stephen's powers being transferred to me. What the fuck was that? Was that demon power? Asks a confused Julian. Stephen was dead, and my ejaculation was done. I detach my little brown and release Stephen's crushed neck. My mince foamed out of his mouth, ears, and eyes. I felt different. I felt powerful. Yes, Julian, I'm a fucking demon now. Oh, holy fuck. Yeah, time to see Satan. Have number 64. I stare at Julian's shocked face. So Stephen Hawkins was a demon and he's not disabled. He's actually just really lazy. And now you has his powers. That's right, Julian. Now I have demon powers. I can try to have Satan. And then I can return to Earth. You know, it's just because you had demon powers doesn't mean you're strong enough to have Satan, you know. He's fucking hectic, can't man. He's been shaking for thousands of years. <clears throat> I walk over to Julian and place my hand on his shoulder. Julian, I have to try. I can't stay in hell. I have too much unfinished business on Earth. You know, if you fail at this, you will be burning in fire for eternity. I have to try. Julian places his hand on my cheek. I don't want to lose you, Maddie. I'll always be with you, Julian. In here, I point at Julian's heart, then wipe a tear off of Julian's face. We both lean in and kiss slowly with the tongue. Then I gently kiss Julian's neck and see goosebumps appear on his arm. Oh, Maddie. We kiss some more. <laughs> But stop before we lose control. We share a long, loving hug and I say goodbye. I love you, Julian. I always have. Or, um, what's it called? Love you too, Maddie. One last kiss. And I leave the bathroom and try to find Satan. It's absolute carnage as I re-enter the party area. Everyone is in a panic. The music had stopped and people were running in all directions screaming. Satan is there and he's in the process of fucking everyone to death. I watched on as Satan split John Lennon in half with one pump. Satan then grabbed a screaming Heath Ledger and set him on fire. Then forced his balls so far down Heath's throat that he suffocated. Satan then jumped up high in the air and leading with his elbows slammed down onto the skull of Brittany Murphy. He then had a fiddlers she died everyone was running around screaming i see a creature run past me with barbed wire wrapped around its arm i chase it down and tackle it what are you doing yelled the creature i need your barbed wire fine take it shove it up my ass what no do it there's no time the confused creature nods and i turn around pull my pants down and pull my ass cheeks apart i stretch my asshole as far open as i possibly can so far open that it nearly tears the creature looks disgusted and struggles to look at my asshole <laughs> stop fucking around you bitch shove it up my ass now the creature is visibly shaking but starts to feed the barbed wire up my ass the barbs catch on my ring and slice little cuts as they go it's tremendously painful but i only have one chance at this. All of it! I need it all! The creature has its eyes closed and feeds the last of the barbed wire into my core. I let my cheeks go and they slap back together and completely conceal the barbed wire. The creature vomits and I see Satan finishing off a screaming David Bowie. I make my way towards him, past the corpses that littered the ground. I have a grab here and there and exposed breast or cock. Then I look up and it's just me and Satan remaining. Everyone else has been killed for the day. We meet again, Mr. Brown! How would you like to be fucked to death today? 
Not today, Satan. Today I will be fucking you. Are you challenging me, Mac Black Greg? Be very careful with what you say next, as they may be your last words. Ah! I sprint at Satan, then lunge at him. With my arms by my side and my head flying first, I slam into his chest and send him flying. Satan crashes to the ground. He looks confused and fills with rage. You have demon powers? How did you know? Hitler told me how to get demon powers. That German cunt! I leap at Satan again, and I curl into a ball midair. Satan is too fast and jumps up and kicks me like a soccer ball. He volleys me halfway across the party room, and I slid along the ground. My soft body is covered and scratches and I'm disorientated then I remember hearing footsteps bang Satan toe punts my head with a run up the top of his foot connects flush with my nose as he kicks forwards and up my creamy body again gets slung across the room from the force of the kick my nose is now completely flat on my face and blood is streaming out you have made a big mistake Matt Brown I look up and see him storming towards me he's too strong then out of the corner of my eye I see a gun it was lying next to Tupac's body I reach for it and grab it with my fingertips Satan is now too steps away from me and he's holding his massive erection and directing it towards my mouth. I grab the gun and point it at Satan. Bang! 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 I shoot at Satan's dick. He stumbles backwards. Oh! Oh! You shot my cock! I pull the trigger of the gun again, but it's out of bullets. His cock was bleeding, but still looked intact. It's gonna take more than bullets to stop me, Brown! I stand up and start power dancing. I do a slap drop and pop my hips from side to side. Satan is mesmerized. I run my hands over my milky skin and grab my own ass cheeks. Then, while I have Satan mesmerized, I quickly move forwards and grab his throat with both of my hands. I squeeze and squeeze, and my little brown starts slithering around the back of Satan, searching for his dot. Satan snaps out of my dance spell and grabs my wrists. He starts starts to pull my arms off his neck, and I use all of my strength to keep choking him. Our eyes remain locked as we battle. Satan slowly starts overpowering me, and my arms start to shake. I see a smile creep onto Satan's face, and then my hands lose grip on his neck. In one movement Satan spins my body and pulls me into him. So now he's hugging me from behind and I can't free my arms. His arms were wrapped tightly around me and he was crushing me. (laughs) Very good try Brown. You have been a formidable opponent. I felt his massive dick part my cheeks (sighs) and then I heard it sniffing for an entry point. Then, without hesitation, his dick shot straight into my asshole. Oh, no! Satan screamed in pain. The barbed wire in my ass had wrapped around Satan's dick and was shredding it to pieces. Satan tried to pull his dick out, but the barbed wire only sunk deeper into Satan's shaft. I felt his warm blood filling my guts and I started laughing. Satan was trapped. He could not go forwards or backwards without amputating his cock. It's not over until it's over, my sweet, sweet Lucifer. Oh, please, my- Stop this! If you free me, we can rule hell together! I won't ever fuck you again! I threaded my cock back in between my legs, then in between his legs, and it started burrowing in between his cheeks. Stop this, Brown! I look over my shoulder at Satan to see his face as my little Brown enters his ass. His eyes widened and his mouth dropped open. My little Brown started swelling and spinning, getting deeper and deeper. I lean back into Satan and pull his head towards me. We share a passionate kiss as my reverse fucking starts to speed up. His tongue was hot and I could sense that he was nervous. He hadn't been had in thousands of years and now he knew I had won. Then finally, as we're kissing, my balls contract and I inject my mints into Satan. With his dick in my ass and my dick in his ass, I kiss Satan's face as I slowly watch him die. You have bestowed me, Mr. Brown. I finish mincing and feel the devil's body go limp. My little brown unplugs from him and he falls to the ground. His dick finally comes out of my ass, with all the barbed wire still wrapped around it. I feel something strange in my head. They were horns. I look up and see Julian. Holy fuck, Matty. You're Satan now, come. Fly like cly like Julian. Fly la like like cly. <laughs> I look down at my body and I'm a light shade of red. I suddenly have long, sharp fingernails. I feel a tail extend from above my ass. I felt more powerful than ever. Julian and I stare at each other in disbelief. You did it, man. You're Satan now. You're the ruler of hell. We did it, Julian. If you didn't save me from Stephen Hawking's, I would be dead now. 
I see tears rolling down my sweet Julian's face. I'm overwhelmed with emotion and I stride towards him. Julian runs and we embrace each other. We kiss passionately and we're both crying. I sucked on Julian's bottom lip and then pressed my tongue into his mouth. Our tongues wrestled and our mouths mushed together. It was the most beautiful moment I had ever experienced. I truly did love Julian with my whole heart. We stopped kissing, kissing briefly to stare at each other's eyes. We both still had our arms wrapped around each other and the tips of our noses were touching as we wept with pure happiness. I thought I was going to lose you, Matty. Stop, stop, Julian. I'm, I'm safe now. We can finally be together. Our mouths connect again and our movements start becoming more firm and sexual. With both hands, I grab Julian's ass cheeks and lift him off the ground. He wraps his legs around me and starts sucking my neck. Oh my god, Julian. Don't stop. Oh, don't ever stop. Uh, have me, Matty. Have me as hard as you can. We become frantic and remove our clothes. Wait, Julian. I don't think I should have you. I think you should have me. But if I have you, then I become Satan. Exactly. I'm not made for hell. You are. You're perfect for down here. I belong up on earth. You want me to be Satan? For real? As long as you send me back to earth. Maddie. but then I won't get to see you. You can come and visit and take on a human form. Maddie. that's crazy. I've got it all figured out, Julian. I go up to earth and get a human job. I don't know what yet, but I think I could use my mints to make concrete or something and then sell it. Then you come up when you aren't ruling hell, and you could also get a human job. I'm thinking maybe like a doctor or a president. Nah, fuck that, I'll just sell drugs or some shit. <laughs> nah, 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 I'll, I'll make videos and shit, yeah. Yeah, I'll make vids. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> then we make human friends at our jobs and get our human friends to become friends. That way we slowly come back into, into each other's lives and no one will ever suspect a thing. <laughs> Eventually we can be together every day again, but on earth. That is fucking crazy, Maddie. But I'll do anything for you. Fuck it. Let's do it. I immediately drop to my knees and grab the base of Julian's cock. I tease him a little and touch the tip with my tongue. Then, just as I wrap my warm lips around Julian's cock, What the fuck is this? Hitler was standing there, looking completely confused. Surely you did not forget our deal, Mr. Brown. I had promised Hitler to let him have me in exchange for the information of how to become a demon to defeat Satan. Hitler, circumstances have changed. You can have your have, but I have to ha let Julian have me first. And let Julian become Satan? I don't think so, Mr. Brown. Why do you think I made this deal with you to begin with? Because I, if you did happen to defeat Satan, then I would be able to have you, making me Satan. Becoming Satan was my plan all along. You dirty German bastard! The deal is off. I'm Satan. Suck shit. Now get out of here before I kill you. A sly smile crept over Hitler's face. I had a feeling you might become greedy, Mr. Brown. But there is something you don't know about me. I too am a demon. I too am very powerful. I have been secretly training for this last 60 years for this moment. Hitler lunges at me in a shocking speed. His knee drives straight into my chest and I hear some of my ribs break as I fly backwards. Hitler advances again and I step out of the way and King hit Hitler in the side of the head. He stumbles but remains standing. Let's fucking get him, Matty! Stay out of this, Julian! He's incredibly strong! Nah, 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 fuck that! If you fuck with Matty, you fuck with me! Julian sprints at Hitler. Julian! No! Hitler ducks Julian's wild haymaker and throws an almighty uppercut. It connects with Julian's chin and sends him flying. He slams into the ceiling and falls back down to the next to Hitler. I didn't even have time to react before Hitler started stomping Julian. I heard Julian's ribcage crack and splinter with every stomp. I begin running at Hitler, but before I could reach him, Hitler punched straight down at Julian and his fist exploded through Julian's chest. I land a flying kick into Hitler and he skids across the room. Julian! Julian is a mangled mess. There's blood pouring from his mouth. He's clearly dying. Uh, Maddie, oh, I will always love you, cunt. I stroked Julian's cheek as I sobbed. <laughs> no, Julian, please. 
I can't do this without you, Julian. No! No, please! No! I watch Julian fall unconscious, and my despair quickly turns to rage, and I look up. Hitler had just taken the only thing that mattered in my life. <laughs> I'm going to fucking kill you, Hitler. <laughs> okay, Mr. Brown. I've heard it all before. Before he even finishes his sentence, I'm above him. I bomb dive onto his skull and we fall to the ground together. I'd never felt such rage. I take top position on Hitler, making fists with my hands and erratically start raining down bombs on Hitler. His face looks shocked at my newfound strength. Hitler tries to block my strikes with his arms, but my powerful blows strings swing straight through his defense and slam into his face. Blow after blow and Hitler can do nothing. This is for Julian! I start swinging harder and faster. Hitler has stopped blocking my fists and they're just slamming straight into his head now. He's unconscious, but I keep banging. I punch and punch and punch until his head is nothing but a pile of mush. Then I drag my cock and balls through the mush and piss and shit on it. He is dead! My rage subsides and my mind turns back to Julian. I fly over to him, expecting him to be dead. Then, what's this? His chest slowly rises and falls. Julian is clinging to life. Julian! Hang in there! An idea hits me. If Julian has me and becomes Satan, his Satan powers should automatically heal him. I get to work and squat over his crotch. I grab his flaccid cock and start smooshing it up my ass. I even thumb his balls in. Then carefully, I start bouncing up and down and feel Julian's cock swell slightly. Yes, that's it, Julian. I start riding him slowly, rolling my hips forwards and backwards while squeezing my asshole around him to make sure his flaccid cock didn't fall out of my ass. I feel his cock inflate a bit more, then more. He had a semi now. I ride like I've never ridden before. I press down on him to push him deeper inside of me. Yes, that's it, Julian. Come for me, baby. You can do it. Oh, yeah. Julian's bloody face starts to stir and move. He was regaining consciousness. I'm now fully bouncing up and down on Julian like a drunk schoolie slut. He's fully erect. Then his eyes shoot open suddenly. Oh, I'm coming. Yes, Julian. I feel his warm, milky juju juice flood my anal cavity. Then I feel my powers leaving me. They transfer to Julian as he finishes filling my colon. I get off of Julian and I'm back to normal Matt Brown without any powers. Julian's wounds start to heal and I see horns grow on his head. Eddie, he saved me and I'm Satan now. Anything for you, Julian? Now, send me back to Earth. Have number sixty six. I feel Julian's thick lower lip pop out of my mouth. I come back for more and feverishly consume his tongue and let his saliva cascade down the back of my throat. We pull away and see that quite a large crowd had formed and was watching us make love for the last hour. Julian nodded, and I knew it was time. We detangled our bodies, and Julian took my hands in his. This isn't goodbye, Maddie. It's I'll see you later. There won't be a day that goes by that I don't think about you, my sweet Julian. As promised, I'm going to send you back to Earth now. That means you will be revived at the exact place you died. At the exact same time I died as well? No. One day in hell is like five minutes on earth. So since you got to hell like four days ago, about 20 or 30 minutes have passed on earth. So on earth right now, it's only 20 minutes since I've died. Yeah, that's exactly right, cunt. Now get ready. Here we go. I gripped Julian's hands and felt his power coursing through my body. I'm scared, Julian. Will this hurt? I would never let anything hurt you, Maddie. Just relax. I immediately feel relaxed and we share one final kiss as I feel myself projecting upwards. I love you, Maddie. I love you, Julian. I burst through the ceiling and it feels as if I'm falling up. Everything is a blur and I'm traveling at light speed. I shoot through different dimensions and all the colors of the universe swirl around me. Then, with an almighty thud, my spirit explodes back into my deceased human body on Earth. I'm back to life. I take my first breath there and open my eyes. I'm still lying on the floor in a pool of blood. I felt my head where the baseball bat wounds previously were and they had all completely healed. I was alive 
and fully healthy. I heard footsteps approach behind me and decided to play dead. I wanted the element of surprise to help me defeat Choir. I felt Choir grab my ankles as I continued to play dead. She started dragging my limp body towards the garage, giggling. My heart began beating harder. It was nearly time to attack. She stops at the garage door and drops my legs. She turns to open the door, and I quickly and silently stand. Choir opens the garage door, still with her back facing me. I make a fist with my hand, except my thumb sticking up, erect and firm. Then I sling my left arm at her. The full length of my thumb stabs straight into her neck, and with my other hand I start punching in the back of her skull. Her arms claw back at me, and she struggles to pull my thumb out of her neck. Suddenly she kicks back like a donkey, and her heel drives into my testicles. The kick is so powerful it dislodges my thumb from her neck, and I stumble back. I feel my nut rupture and blood begins to fill my creamy sack. She turns with blood squirting from her neck wound. How is this possible? You're dead, Matt! She gasps as the confused old hag. I cradled my paws and tried to ignore the blinding pain. I fucked Satan, and now I'm in love with him, you bitch! I launch myself feet first at her knees. She screams as her knees snap backwards. She falls to the floor in a crumpled heap. Ow! Matthew! Son! Son! Please don't whack! I toe punt her snout, and her head snaps back. She's knocked out cold. You don't have to do this, Matt. I turn and see Queston standing in the hallway holding his injured head he had a bandage wrapped around his head and he was leaning against the wall he was incredibly weak from my previous attack good question i'm glad you're here to see this i'm going to brutally fuck our mother and fill her insides with my silk once i've ripped up her clunge then i'm finally going to have you again while our mother's juices still freshly coat my cock Question looks defeated, and I see him start to cry. <laughs> Pathetic. I look down at Choir. She's regained consciousness, and she's clutching at her fucked knees. Just try and enjoy this, Mum. She looks up at me through teary eyes and spreads her mangled legs for me. I get down on my knees and look back to make sure Question is watching. He is. I grab Quiet's fucked looking head and we start kissing. Her nose sits directly in between her eyes and her mouth t- takes up 80% of her face. Despite her grotesque appearance, it felt nice to kiss a female again. It had been a while. I feel her body as she wraps her arms around me. I grope as I slowly slide my hands all over her. My hand finds her breast and our kissing intensifies. I grab both of her tits and with both of my hands and I squeeze them so hard that they go purple. I peek at Question to make sure he's still watching. He is. My little brown has made its way out of my pants and has flattened itself like a threatened toad, ready for battle. Quiet rips her pants where her gash is. It's strange that I came from that hole and now we'll be coming in that hole. Quiet is eager for me to enter her and I can tell she's enjoying this. I stare deeply into my own mother's eyes as my fuck wand slides inside her. As soon as I'm in, we erupt into passion. Our mouths start kissing and tonguing at each other and my groping intensifies. I stretch both of her tits into my mouth and suck on them like I did when I was an infant. I drill harder and faster at her slit. Her snap knees clatter and flop about behind me as she holds up her split legs. I stare at Question and I feel my eyes bulging out of my head. My eyeballs... My eyeballs kept stretching out of my head until I looked like a fucking snail. They stretched down the hallway and stared at Question as I thumped away at our ecstatic mother. Oh, Matt! Yes! Ah, Keep fucking your mother! My eyes kept stretching out of my skull until they were centimetres away from Question's face. Then, my eyes retract back into my skull as I start climaxing with my mother. Choir arches her back with pleasure and I keep pounding away as I drain my blood filled ball bag into her core. My mi- <laughs> My mints and blood combine to make a fuck chutney. My ch- <laughs> my, f- my chutney fills my mother and she squeals in ecstasy. I cock my head back and I let out a primal roar. <gasps> oh! Oh! We finish and I look at her now, quivering question. I unplug my little brown and my fuck chutney flows freely from my mother's cunt. I stand up and walk over to question. What, what do you think about that, mate? He, st- he says nothing and stares off vacantly. Look, I'm going to leave you for now. 
I want you to recover so that this is a fair fight. But I will be back. And I will have you so that there is no question that I, Matt Brown, am our family's number one haver. I look back at Choir. She looks like a mangled mess. But her face is relaxed and satisfied. I've done my job. Fly la cly la 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 cly la 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 I say as I take a shit on Crescent's bed. Then I leave. It felt good to be back on Earth. Now, time to go find more haves. Have... Number sixty-seven. I was sitting at home enjoying some raw sausages while I tortured my neighbor's cat. It was good to be home. I was fully rested and I had had an urge to celebrate. I decided I would hit the town and see if I could find someone to spill my silkworms into. I got changed into my finest clothes, tight white jeans, a tight long sleeved white shirt and my white wig. I hurried out and began scanning the bars. I saw a fine creature and approached her. Hello, I am Matt Brown. Yes, yes. Did you know that I used to be Satan? Can you not stand so close to us? You smell like raw meat. Freak. I quickly moved on to the next, but time after time I was getting rejected. But my spirits remained high as I knew this was a numbers game, so I continued aggressively hitting on women. I bought a girl a drink and showed her my gills. She poured the drink out and had security remove me. Now it was getting later and later into the night, and I was becoming more and more desperate as the crowd started to dwindle. Time and time again, I am rejected, and before I know it, it's 5am. Then the music stops and the lights turn on. Oh no, it's closing time. I feel my frustrations bubble over and I smash my glass on the ground. Fuck! The bartender stares at me and I leave. I needed to calm down, so I decide to walk home. Ten minutes into my walk and I start to feel better. I realize that worst case scenario, I can just call a prostitute. My spirits start to soar and lift again, and then I hear it. It sounded like a man was very, very sick. I walk towards the sound and it leads me down a dark, quiet street. Then I see it. There's only one street light on this street and leaning up against it was a very large woman and she was power vomiting into the gutter. My sperm starts to crystallize with excitement and my heart starts to spin in my chest. This is my last chance. I storm over to her. Hey, is everything all right? (laughs) This woman was massive, my height at least, but twice as wide. She had her entire hand down her throat and was forcing herself to vomit. She removed her hand from her throat and large strings of saliva and vomit came with it. She had vomit all over a small tight top and half of one of her massive sloppy tits was hanging out. She had a denim skirt on that had ridden up so high that I could see her pubic hair hanging out of either side of her underwear. I do not feel so good. So I'm just having a bit of a vomit so I'm not hungover in the morning. That's absolutely genius. <laughs> you must be very clever. <laughs> yes, I suppose I am. <laughs> I just can't be late for work tomorrow, so. I doubt any other employee would go to such lengths for their job. What do you do exactly? Are you a model? <laughs> no, I'm a removalist. Wow, you must be very strong. Her unfocused eyes stared at me as she swayed from side to side, hiccuping. She smelt of garlic sauce and goon, and I could see large bits of kebab in her vomit that hadn't been chewed. She must have been swallowing her bites whole. Would you like me to walk you home? Are you trying to fuck me, Cam? As she said this, she pulled her undies to the side and started pissing while she stood. The stream was as powerful as the stream from a hose, and the smell of old bender piss hit my nose. I wasn't sure what to say, so I just decided to be honest. Well, yeah, yeah I am. She finished pissing and let go of her undies. They slapped back into place and were immediately drenched from the remaining urine caught in her pubic hair. Well, come on then, cunt. She ripped at her top and both of her huge saggy tits spilt out and hung like two sandbags from her chest. I had finally done it and scored myself a babe. I rushed forwards and our mouths connected. Her mouth was full of food and vomit debris and the smell of her breath nearly rendered me unconscious. I got on my knees and sucked on the end of one of her tits. Her entire 
nipple filled my mouth. My my bre- my beast was still leaning against the streetlight and started thumbing herself with her free hand. I had a miscarriage not too long ago, so you can come in me. This excited me to a great deal, and I started trying to tongue at her gash. I pulled her piss soaked gundies off and slung them onto the road. Her pubic hair felt like steel wool, and the smell it harbored was of decomposing fish and stomach ulcers. My tongue fought desperately to get through the hair and locate the hole, but it was useless. Lie down, I tell her firmly. Okay, she says, and drunkenly falls and slaps onto her norm- her enormous back. Then she spreads her legs. <sighs> Come on, tear up me clunge. <laughs> I grab the base of my cock, <laughs> my little brown, and harpoon this beast straight up her slot. She giggles with pleasure, and I froth from my mouth as I start laying in. She opens her mouth wide, and I can't miss this opportunity. I extract my pulsing dick and drop it into her mouth, vomit-coated mouth. Her mouth opens so wide, her lower jaw stretches over my asshole. I feel her tonguing at my dot <laughs> while my cock and balls are still down her throat. <laughs> she power vomits all over my junk, and the force from the vomit pushes me out of her. Someone call the police! A couple yells out from across the street as they watch this unfold under the streetlight. I ignore them, and with all my might, I roll my meal over onto her belly. I stab my dick back in her slit from behind. I pull her cheeks apart as I thump away to reveal fresh, watery shit caked on each cheek. I torpedo deeper into her meat slab, and I start to go cross-eyed. I fuck thump harder and harder, and she starts yodeling. Yodeling, 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 yodeling. I notice a car pull up next to us just as I start juicing my silkworms into this bag of fat. I thrust forwards and hold myself deep as my balls drain. The person in the car looks on in utter shock and speeds away. I pull my flesh stick out and cream gushes out after it. I'd filled this beast with my silky mints and we were both lying on the ground. I glance over to my trophy and she was already asleep, snoring deeply. I get up and don't even bother covering my slain dragon. I leave her how she is and I simply bounce home backwards and put on some porn. Have number 68. (laughs) I was drinking hand cream while watching myself in the mirror. (laughs) This was the happiest I'd been in years, I thought to myself, as I squeezed another large mouthful of the hand cream down my throat. I decided to continue with my training, so today, I was going to the gym. I packed my little brown bag and bounded backwards to my favorite gym across town. Once there, I immediately got on the treadmill and put it on the highest speed. Then I began running on it. Backwards, of course. I could maintain a full backwards sprint for well over an hour. However, during my workout, something caught my eye across the other side of the gym. I saw a woman with burns covering 80% of her body. She had one arm and no legs. She was completely bald except for a small tuft of hair on the side of her head. She was the most beautiful amputee I had ever seen. She was sitting in a wheelchair and attempting to remove a small weight from the rack with her one arm. I saw my opportunity and turned my treadmill off. I slithered over to her and flared my gills. Would you like some help? Oh, yes, please. Could you grab the three kilo weight for me? I handed her the weight and stared at her scarred head. (laughs) It's okay. You can ask me what happened. A little embarrassed, I tried to play it off. Oh, oh, (laughs) what what, what do you mean? About my burns and missing legs and arm. (laughs) Oh, 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 I hadn't even noticed. (laughs) Right. Well, it was a car accident. I fell asleep at the wheel and crashed into a petrol station. It exploded and my entire body caught fire. I was in a coma for three months. Oh, well, that was a bit silly, wasn't it? <laughs> I said stupidly. I don't do well with uncomfortable conversation. Yeah, it was really silly. Anyway, that was four years ago, so here I am trying to rehabilitate myself with a body I have now. Well, that's inspirational. I went through a similar event when my mother killed me. I had to go through hell to stay alive. Oh, wow. It's rare to meet someone who went through a similar near-death experience. (laughs) My name's Cuckleck anyway, she said with a (laughs) smile. Nice to meet you, Cuckleck. I'm Matt Brown. We chatted for hours, right there in the middle of the gym. I steered our conversation towards sex, as I was curious if she still got drilled. So with all your injuries, can you still be, like, intimate? 
What, you mean sex? <laughs> Hell yeah, I can. I mean, I haven't since the accident. Who would want to be with me now? I'd probably have to pay someone. <laughs> you mean you haven't been with anyone since your accident? That's crazy. And don't be so fucking stupid. Any man would be lucky to split your puffy slit. Oh, that's the nicest thing anyone has ever said to me. You really think someone would want to be with me? Cuckleck, I'm certain of it. I mean, I mean, I would, in a heartbeat. We stare at each other, and a smile creeps on her face, and she looks around. <laughs> Do me- Okay! I grab her remaining tuft of hair and lift her out off her wheelchair. I sprint to the disabled toilet and toss her in and slam the door behind us. I rip my clothes off in one movement and turn around. She's lying on the ground with her one arm keeping her up or upright. I advance on her and grab her disfigured head and feed my huge, smooth testicles into her mouth. She sucks on my balls as my throbbing cock sits on her forehead. Suck harder! I command. She obeys and my balls stretch and stretch all the way down her throat. I can see panic in her eyes as they stretch so far down that I can feel her stomach acid digesting the tip of my balls. I pull her head back and my balls retract out of her and sling back into their original position. I grab her tuft of hair and reef her up onto the vanity. I rip her clothes off and dislocate my own jaw. Then I proceed to wrap my mouth around her entire lower half of her body so the burnt stumps where her legs were and her hips filled my mouth. Then I began sucking on her. What the fuck are you? I ignore her and keep sucking. I fondle at her burnt chest where her tits used to be, then I pull back, leaving my slimy saliva dripping off her gash. By now my little brown is so hard, it's about to explode. I grab Cucklack's shoulders and guide her onto my now quivering brown. I enter her, and the fact that she has no legs allows me to drive deeply into her cervix. Once I had her skewered on, I start fuck-thumping like I've never done before. I'm pulling her into me, but pounding forwards like a jackhammer. We maintain eye contact, and I can see she's confused at what's happening, but seems to be enjoying it. Then I start spinning her on my dick. Faster and faster I spin her. I spin her so fast that she becomes a blur and starts making a humming sound. The only thing protruding from the blur is her one outstretched arm. She spins so fast it starts to burn our skin. Smoke billows from our fuck holes. Then, like a gunshot, my ejaculate explodes from my body and shoots the spinning amputee straight into the wall. My mint powerfully hurtles from my cock hole, which has stretched as wide as a dinner plate. Cuck like is pinned against the wall under the force of my mint stream, and I'm screaming in pleasure as I empty myself. <laughs> Finally, my stream weakens and Cucklek drops to the ground, covered in my fuck chutney. I see her shocked face. What the fuck just happened? That wasn't sex, was it? I ignore her and just shrug. I take my clothes and walk straight out of the toilet, leaving the door open behind me so she can crawl back to her wheelchair. That's my workout done, cunt. Time to get home. Have number 69. <laughs> I was setting a trap at the public library to hunt nerds with low self-esteem. I was on my hands and knees and had flattened my body out so I looked like a table. I was waiting like this for four hours already, hoping that a nerd would place their books on my back and sit at me. I decided to take a break and maybe move my trap to a busier part of the library. I inflated my body to its original state and started walking around. I saw a few students studying in the corner, but other than that, the library was nearly empty. Damn it, I thought. I needed more people for my trap to work. I continued walking around the library, and then I spotted something. At the end of a wall of books, hidden at the end, I saw a door. My eyes zoomed in on the door. <coughs> oh, what's this? I see a small hole in the middle of the door. I didn't know where the door led, but I assumed it must be the door to an old storage room. I scuttle over like a sand crab for a closer look. My damp eyes scan my surroundings. The door was hidden from view from the rest of the library by bookshelves. The circular hole in the door is roughly one centimeter in diameter. It seems I have found myself a cute little glory hole. My urges immediately get the better of me and I feel the maggots in my nutsack start to writhe. I flip my soft, sticky slug out and begin feeding it into this hole. The hole is far too small. I become impatient and start gently palming my little brown into the hole. 
I become a little harder and bigger, which makes it even more difficult. I become frustrated and start hammering hard with my palm. Bang, 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 bang. Come on, you little cunt. Then finally, my knob squeezes through the small hole. The excitement makes my shaft start to swell, so I didn't have much time. I start fucking forwards. I didn't feel anything on the other side, so perhaps this wasn't a glory hole, but I was too de- in too deep to stop now. I stab and ram and drive my hips into the door. <laughs> The edges of the small hole start scraping the skin off my dick, but it's working. Now half my shaft was through the tiny hole. Come on! I scream. I keep pummeling my ripped up pleasure stick through the small hole. Suddenly, my entire shaft slides through the hole as all of my cock skin is torn off. My rock hard, de-gloved little brown is now entirely through the hole. Ah! The pain excites me. I bang away for a little longer and then feel my hot mints powerfully eject from my little brown with the pressure of a fully open tap. I spray my fuck chutney into this room and let out a howl as I do so. (laughs) What are you doing? The sound of the librarian's voice snaps me out of my fuck trance and I pull my skinless cock back out of the hole and quickly tuck into my pants. Oh, nothing. Uh, I just can't find a book I'm looking for. Just as I finish speaking, the door I had just fucked swings open towards me. There, standing in complete shock, was what looked like a teacher. I look past her and see that this was not a storage room at all. It was a large room filled with special needs students who was learning how to read. My mince was caked onto the ceiling and walls of their room and most of the students were crying. The teacher stood in front of me, completely stunned. Her and I stared at each other and said nothing. The only thing that broke the silence was the gentle sobbing of the students behind her. I was horrified at my mistake. I quickly slam the door closed and bound powerfully past the librarian. I bound backwards straight through the second through a second story window and land on the ground on my back. I twist around like an injured pig and look up at the window I'd just come through. I see the librarian's face peer out of the broken window. Just as I begin bounding home as fast as I could, I can feel my skinless cock bleeding into my nappy and I cringe at what I'd done. I will never hunt in that library ever again this week. <laughs> Have number 70. (laughs) It was a hot, humid summer's morning, and I was ironing the knots out of my scrotum. (laughs) My thick skin sizzled as the red-hot iron glided across my outstretched testicles. A broad smile crept across my face as the distinct smell of my own searing flesh swindled up my nostrils. I get distracted and when I see movement out of the corner of my eye, someone was approaching my front door. I sprint like an emu to my window. It's the mailman, but a new mailman, one I had never seen before. He had short blonde hair and was wearing glasses. Hmm, Quite handsome. I make a split decision and decide to prank him. I excitedly waddle over to my front door. I had a mail slot in the middle of my door where my my mail would, would get delivered through. I quickly pull down my pants and stretch my asshole so as to the length of the mail slot. Then I press my asshole directly against the mail slot and wait. I can barely contain my my laughter as I hear the footsteps approach from the other side of the door. <coughs> I hear the mailman fumble through his mailbag and then hear the sound of my mail slot being opened. Then I feel the gentle pressure of some letters being fed directly into my asshole. The mailman, clearly confused, pushes harder until his actual fingers are deep inside my wet shit tube. Then slap! I release my ass cheeks and my asshole wraps around his hand. I squeeze tight as he tries to pull his fingers out of my ass. I burst out into full laughter as he continues to attempt to wrestle his hands free. Then something strange happens. Instead of pulling out, the mailman starts to push his hand in further. His hand starts working its way on my colon, and before long, his entire arm is up to his elbow in my ass. Then something even more strange. I hear the mailman laughing on the other side of the door. Enough is enough, and I relax my sphincter and pull the arm out of me. The mailman pulls pulls his arm back through the mail slot, and I immediately open the door. (laughs) <laughs> That's a really funny prank, man. I got you back, though. <laughs> yeah, you did. I was not expecting that. Well played. So you're the new mailman. Welcome to the neighborhood. Yeah, I guess I am. Thanks for making me feel so comfortable. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I'm Matt Brown. <laughs> I'm Jeffrey Dahmer. But you can call me Jeff. Nice to meet you, Jeff. <laughs> hey, you want to see something cool? I found it this morning. 
Jeff starts to fumble in his mailbag and pulls out a little cooler. He opens it, and inside are some organs. Oh, wow. What are they? You found them, did you? Yeah, found them in my yard. Probably just some kids playing a prank or something. It's a heart, a stomach, and some lungs. Pretty neat, huh? Yeah, very interesting. We both stare at each other, and I can't quite explain it. But we shared a deep-rooted connection. Like we had known each other for years. I felt immediately comfortable with Jeff. Almost like we were kindred spirits. I love how shiny they are. Do you want to fuck them together? (laughs) I was a little startled by his forwardness, but I would be lying if I said I wasn't thinking the exact same thing. (laughs) Jeff, you read my mind. Please, come in. (laughs) I had a feeling you would be cool with it. We both enter my home and Jeff places his organs on the coffee table on my lounge room. So how shall we do this? Well, I'm just going to pick an organ and sort of just fuck a hole through it. (laughs) It's kind of just whatever you want to do. I watch Jeff remove his pants and flop his slug out of his underwear. I follow suit and release my little brown. We both stare at each other's cocks for a second. (laughs) And then Jeff picks up the stomach. Which one do you want? I, I want the stomach. He hands me the stomach and then starts dipping and wiping his balls across the lungs. I look at the stomach. Its shininess is truly mesmerizing. I find a little hole and feed my flaccid little brown in. Almost instantly, I become erect. I look over at Jeff and he's now fucking down at the lungs like a champion's. My pupils dilate and I start fucking the stomach. I use it like a flashlight and pull it over my salty fuckstick. Jeff and I become animalistic in our fucking and we both start making sounds. Ah! Within minutes, we are tearing the organs apart and fuck thumping down at the bits we see. Jeff and I meet in the middle and kiss passionately and then pull away and swap organs. Jeff looks on in horror as my balls swell to ten times their size. Then he sees my gills widen along my neck. Look away! I scream just as I ejaculate powerfully into the fuckhole I had created in the lungs. My mince chunders out, dissolving the lungs before my, our very eyes. Mince gushes out and my balls tighten. I finish and with some mild embarrassment and my loss of control, I look at Jeff. He stares back. Well, Matt, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Yeah, sorry. Would you like to join me for some dinner and drinks at my place tomorrow? (laughs) I cook a mean steak. I was relieved that Jeff wasn't put off by my actions. (laughs) Jeff, I would love to. Write down your address and I'll be over at seven. Jeff leaves his address and I walk him to the door. I'm real glad I met you, Matt. You seem really cool. I'll see you tomorrow night. I'm looking forward to it, Jeff. Have a great day. I close the door as he leaves. Well, sure I'm glad I played that prank. What a fucking legend. Have number 71. (sighs) I was ripping the long legs off of grasshoppers and placing them on active ants' nests. I would would get excited when the ants swarmed the grasshopper, as the grasshopper could not no longer hop away. I glanced down at my watch. It was 6pm. I better stop playing and start getting ready for my date with Jeff. I I splash my face with sheep's blood and pick off any visible ticks. Then I put on my favourite work shirt and some stockings. My scrotum pulsed loudly in the tight black stockings. Boom. 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 I leave my house and bound backwards to Jeff's. I arrive at his apartment block, block and buzz his apartment. <clears throat> Hello? Hey, Jeff, it's me, Matt Brown. Great. Come on up, Matty. I've got some brewskis waiting for you. I walk through the door and walk down the hallway to his apartment. What a shithole, I thought to myself. <clears throat> I knock on Jeff's door and he opens immediately. Come on in, man. I enter his apartment and am hit by one of the most tantalizing smells I've ever smelt. I inhale deeply and let the stink swirl in my lungs before my veins carry the smell all to the all parts of my body. Wow, what is that incredible odor? It's divine. Oh, oh you, you, you like it? Yeah, I like it too. It's just this new cologne I've been trying. I wanted, <clears throat> I wanted this smell in my nose forever. Here, Maddie, I made you a brewski. Although I don't really drink much, I didn't want to be rude. I take the drink and have a large mouthful. 
The drink seemed very grainy, but I couldn't get over what wonderful smell and ignored it and kept drinking. We sit down in his lounge room and start chatting. We speak about our sexual fantasies and how attractive we think corpses are. <laughs> we sure do have a lot in common. Then suddenly, I start feeling a little weak. My head became incredibly heavy. Ugh, I'm feeling a bit sick, Jeff. Well, don't worry, Matt. It's probably just the brewski kicking in. I look down at my drink and see floating specks of white powder. Oh, no. Just as I realize what, that I had been drugged, I lose all control of my body. I fight to stay conscious. Just go to sleep, man. It's been real fun getting to know you. I almost feel bad about killing you. I see Jeff stand and walk over to me. I was defenseless. There was nothing I could do. The cunt had me well and truly beat. I feel Jeff grab my head just as I start to pass out. Wait, there's still a chance I can get out of this. I need to enter a dream state. If I can have a dream and turn it into a wet dream, I may be able to ejaculate my scalding hot mint onto Jeff and burn him. It's a long shot, but it's the only chance I have. <sniffs> I come into my dream. I'm at my house and there's no one around. I needed to find something to fuck and quick. I open my front door and it's pouring rain. The sky is pitch black. Where the fuck is everyone? What is this dream? I panic and start bounding backwards towards the middle of the dream city. Surely I will find people there. Rain is pelting down on me as I bound from building to building. Then I realize this is a dream. I should be able to fly. I leap into the air and glide towards my destination. Just like a sugar glider. I land smack bang in the middle of the city. I look around as the rain continues to pound out of the sky. Still no one. Then I see movement up ahead. I can't make out who it is. This person comes closer out of the darkness and I can see more people behind that person. Then people start pouring out of the buildings around me. All these people are wearing the same exact thing. Black suits and black sunglasses. Very quickly I, I am completely surrounded by a sea of people and then I see that it is all one the same person. Question. Hundreds of questions. One question steps forwards to speak to me. Question. What are you doing in my dream? <laughs> oh, Matt. You stupid fucking cunt pig bitch. You think this is all by chance? Question. What are you talking about? Let me fuck one of you. I don't have much time for this. <laughs> oh, Matty. Shut up and listen. I'm the one who taught Jeff everything he knows. I'm the one who sent him to your house. I'm the one who taught him how to drug and fuck. And now you're here, trapped in a nightmare with a thousand versions of me. And the only way out of this is if you defeat all of us and then have us. No, this can't be real. Oh, it's real, Matt. That drug Jeff gave you is something I've been working on my whole life and ensures that I can enter whatever dream you're having and control it. I knew you would try and have a wet dream as a large ditch attempt to survive, so this is the only way I can make sure that that doesn't happen. And now we kill you in this nightmare, <clears throat> which means you won't wake up in real life, which means Jeff will fuck your organs to pieces, and you will be dead again, for real this time. I stood, mouth agape. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. This whole time, Queston had been training Jeff, and now he was in my dream to stop me from having a wet dream so I wouldn't burn Jeff with my hot mints. He had everything thought of. Genius. I quickly realized there was only one way out of this. I was going to have to fight all of these Questons, and have one as soon as possible. I smiled at Queston as rain continued to fall on all of us. Bring it on, Questons. The Questons all looked at each other in shock. Before they could comprehend my reaction, I attacked! To be continued. So it's a continuation from Have, number 71. My huge body lurched forwards as a large amount of rage and adrenaline saturated my swollen heart. Thousands of questions watched on as I careered towards the main speaking question. I balled my hand into a fist and drove it square into Queston's fucking eye socket. His head snapped back and his shitty black sunglasses shattered. Shards of sunglasses powerfully embedded deep into his left eye as he flew backwards and disappeared into the crowd of questions. The other questions stared at me, stunned. Just as I was thinking that maybe this was going to be easy, I saw the main question jump up and out of the sea of questions straight for me. I could see his 
left eye was destroyed from my attack, but he was too fast. He slammed his knees straight into my chest, and I flew backwards and skidded along the road. I tried to stand immediately, but he was already on top of me. He straddled me and pinned my arms down with his. Then he started headbutting me over and over and over and over. Bang, bang, bang. My skull banged into the road over and over again. I managed to free one of my arms and with an outstretched thumb, drove it straight into his other eye as he headbutted down at me. Question pulled back and let out a shriek. I rolled over so I was on top of him now and started scratching at him like a panicking house cat. My fingernails tore strips of skin off his face and chest and Chris Queston desperately tried to blindly deflect my scratching arms with his own. Help! Screamed Queston and all the other Questons started converging on me. I stood and started spinning on the spot with my arms outstretched. I spun so fast I became a blur and as the Questons reached me they were smashed away by my spinning arms. I spun so fast that as soon as they came into contact with me their heads were would be ripped off of their bodies and their torsos would drop to the ground. I spun faster and faster until I lifted off the ground like a fucking helicopter cunt. I could hear the main question beneath me, groaning in pl- pain from his injuries, completely blind. I flew up and up, hundreds of meters as I spun. I flew so high that I reached the edge of the Earth's atmosphere. Then I stopped spinning midair and started falling straight down with my right knee pointed down at the ground. I gained massive amounts of speed and morphed my body into a more do- aerodynamic shape. I was travelling at such speed that my knee caught fire. I break through the clouds and look down to see all the questions still surrounding the main quest and I line him up and fucking bang! I land my knee directly on Queston's neck. The force of the impact was like a meteorite hitting Earth and Queston's body is savagely blown to pieces, leaving a huge crater. All the other questions are blown back and most are killed instantly. I quickly stand, but my knee is destroyed from the impact. I knew I didn't have much time before Dharma killed me in real life, so I gritted my yellow blood teeth and crawled to the closest quest and corpse. I pulled its pants down and fed my little brown straight into its ass. The sounds of thousands of moaning questions stiffened my cock in an instant and I started fucking. Look at me now questions! I'm your fucking god! <laughs> thousands of you and one of me! I started fucking harder and harder as I continued to boast. I could see the remaining questions rolling around in pain and glancing back at me while I absolutely destroyed this corpse. I got that feeling in my legs and with one final thrust, I pulled the dead Queston's body into me and buried my dick as deeply as I could. Mints began flowing. I had done it. I had turned this nightmare into a wet dream which means I must be coming in real life too. I sprayed my mints around wildly like an unmanned fire hose. Then I felt myself start to wake up. My ejaculation was enough to wake me from the deepest of sleep. Pop! I wake up back in reality and hear Jeff screaming, Oh! What the fuck is that? Oh, my face. My body was still extremely weak, but my mints had splashed all over Jeff and he was stumbling around the room with his cock out. I could hear my mints burning into his skin. I looked down on my body and see see that he had stabbed a hole in my stomach and had been fucking it. I must have been seconds from death. Oh, holy shit. I can't fucking see, man. I picked up a knife laying next to me and stabbed it into Jeff's back. He fell to the ground. Listen here, Jeff. You're going to go to the cops and turn your in. You're going to tell them everything, or I will come back and kill you. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah man, I promise. Please, please. Uh. I stumbled out of the house and walked home, fueled by a rage I'd never felt before. I had to find Queston and kill him in real life, once and for all. Have number 72. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Oh, Matt Brown. I was seething with rage at what Queston had done. He had tried to kill me again. My own brother. He had made this personal. I was hell-bent on revenge, but first I needed to blow off some steam. Time to go out on the town and really let my hairs down. (laughs) I applied a thick layer of moisturizer to my milky skin and squirted some in my mouth. Then I bounded backwards to the closest pub. I stormed over to the bartender. Get me three large chocolate milkshakes served in pint glasses and add half a bottle of red wine to each. The bartender looked confused but nodded. I turned away and started scanning the crowd for slits to lay my eggs into. Ah, she's too pretty. (laughs) 
Too sober. She's got a boyfriend. No prospects yet. I turn and chug my first large chocolate milkshake with half a bottle of red wine in it. The bartender looks on in horror as I pour the thick milkshake down my gullet. Chocolate milkshake spills out the sides of my mouth and oozed down my neck and onto my shirt. I did not care though. I wanted to get as fucked as possible to suppress my rage. I neck my second and third milkshakes and signal to the bartender. Hey! Get me a jar full of rum and salt and put it in the microwave until it's boiling hot. The bartender nodded sheepishly and started on my drink. I'm feeling my drinks already, and for the next six hours my binge drinking continues. It's now 2am, and I can barely keep my eyes open. I decide to scan the crowd for any potential holes to hack at. Then there, leaning against a wall outside the girl's toilet, was a magnificent creature. She was thick and pale. Her red hair was vibrant and fierce. Her large, fatty tits shook violently as she power vomited straight onto the floor. I watched the security guards remove her and decided it was time to act. I stumble out after her, applying more moisturizer to my scalp as I went. She was standing on the footpath, swaying side to side. I approach her. Hey... Can I offer you a cab ride home? Okay. Her eyes couldn't quite focus on me and she was hiccuping profusely. She had vomit cascading down her front and dripping onto the ground. I hail a taxi and I thrust her in it. Her head lulls from side to side. I see the taxi driver look in the rear vision mirror nervously. She's not going to be sick, is she, mate? Uh, no, no, no. She's she's just on, on heroin. This seems to work and the taxi driver goes back to concentrating on the road. Then my beast slowly turns to me. <laughs> Fuck me. Fuck me hard, you cunt. <laughs> oh, jackpot. I immediately swoop in and with lock lips, large chunks of vomit swirl around in her mouth as she pushes her hot tongue down my throat. She power vomits while our mouths are connected. Vomit shoots down my throat and I'm forced to skull it. Vomit spurts out the sides of our mouths and sprays onto the interior of the taxi. Hey! Get the fuck out of my cab! Screams the taxi driver. <laughs> All right, say your fucking name on it, you can My redhead beast pulls my head back into hers and we continue to kiss. I feel the taxi swerve and pull over. My beast grabs my hand and stuffs it up her gap. It was sticky and hot. Oh yeah. With my other hand I rip down her top to reveal her fatty milk sacks. I begin sucking on one eagerly. The taxi driver has now opened the back door and was screaming at us to stop. I'll call the cops you freaks. Get the fuck out of my taxi. We continue to ignore him and I grab my twitching little brown and feed it into the bucket sized hole in between this thing's legs. It consumes my entire cock and balls and we both exhale with pleasure. I grab her meaty legs and bend them back over her fucked head. I start fucking fast. My beast vomits straight on her chest while I fuck which makes me vomit veins down mine. I bend down and continue to suck at her tits. I suck until I draw blood from her teats. I hear the cab driver talking to the cops on the phone but we don't dare slow down. People walking past had stopped and in shock and were filming us on their phones. I I arch my back and keep fucking wildly. With every forward thrust, her fatty body surges up and down like a water balloon. I feel slugs exiting my pores in my skin and I know I'm close. I hear police get out of their car and surround the cab. They had their tasers drawn. Hey, stop what you're doing right now! I continue to ignore them as slugs covered my body. I pound forwards and crush up her guts. My beast is convulsing with pleasure as vomit trickles from her nostrils. Then I feel it. I'm about to mince. Here comes my fuck truck! I scream at her. Just as I'm about to mince, the police open fire with their tasers. The taser stabs into my back and my body fully tenses as my mince chunders from my cock eye. I look down at my beast and she has three different tasers frying her. We sit there for a minute while electricity courses through our climaxing bodies. Just as the tasing stops, I stop mincing. I fall on top of her and we just lay there. Next thing I know, the cops pull us out of the taxi by our hair and take us to the station. Worth it. Time to sleep it off and start hunting Questin. Fuck. Number 72. I was playing with my Barbies on a lazy Sunday afternoon. I would make them have arguments with each other, and then I would punish them them for their arguments by melting them down to liquid and funneling them up my ass. (laughs) How I love my Barbies. I lay down on my back and let my body relax. Soon I'll have to find Queston and kill him once and for all, but today, I relax. 
<laughs> I realised I was feeling a bit horny when my nipples started to swell. Hmm, perhaps a cheeky little hooker will curb my urges. A dirty, dirty prostitute. I pull my phone out. Hey Siri, call Walter. Calling Walter. <laughs> the phone rings and Walter answers. Hello? Walter, it's me. Come around, right now. <sighs> Hang on, sweetheart. I'll be over after me cigarette. I get off the phone and spread margarine over my hairy chest. <laughs> the margarine melts over my nipples and I chuckle as the melted margarine sizzles away. I hear a car parking outside. Walter is here. I beat her to my front door and open it before she can knock. She's the same old Walter. She looked like she'd been dragged along behind a horse for the last ten years, and her long gold hair was thinning on top so I could easily see her scalp. She was still very obese and had cigarette burns all over her arms. She was loudly chewing gum and wearing a small red boob tube and a short denim skirt. Her thick cellulite riddled legs shook with every step. Walter was just her fake prostitute name, of course. She spat out the gum. <laughs> Let's get this over with. I let her in and catch a whiff of her scent as she passes me. She smelt of abortion clinic disinfectant and maggots. We make our way to the bedroom and Walter lifts her skirt. I remove my pants and shirt and waste no time. I push Walter and she falls on the bed. She lays on her fat back and spreads her legs for me. I wrap my hand around my flaccid cock and balls and then stuff my fist up Walter. She barely even stirs as I'm probably her 15th client of the day. I release my junk whilst inside of her and wait to get hard. Walter stares blankly up at the, up at the ceiling. I fiddle with her top and pull a tit out. Then I start getting hard. I feel Walter's face and, <laughs> and touch her skin, and it's as rough as tree bark. She looks at me, and I gently start thrusting. How you been? All right? I've been well, Walter. How about you? How are the kids? Yeah, not bad. Kids are all right. I can't find one of them. That's enough small talk now, Walter. Walter nods and lights up a cigarette. I flip Walter on her stomach and have a smash from behind. <laughs> I stab my cock through her hairy cheeks and bury it deep. I feel Walter press back against me. Oh, that's it, Maddie. Let me have it. I start fucking hard and fast. Faster and faster. Her ass, ass cheeks slap against my thighs. Uh, 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 I grab a fistful of her back fat as my cock and balls solidify while I mince. Filthy hot magma spills into my sweet, sweet Walter. <laughs> my body weakens and I fall to the side. Do you want to smack? Get out, Walter. <laughs> Walter pulls up her skirt. See, I said get out, Walter. <laughs> I hear Walter close the door behind her and smile as my body relaxes. Tomorrow, I will find and kill Queston. <laughs> Have... Number 74. It was time. It was sunrise, and I just applied a thick layer of lipstick and put on a fresh nappy. I trimmed my foreskin for extra efficiency. I stared at myself in the mirror and did some self-talking. You're the man, Matt Brown. This is your time. Take it. Take what's yours. Once I was sufficiently hyped up, I stepped outside and eagerly sniffed the crisp morning air to try and find Queston's scent. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh, I think I found you, Queston. I turned my back in the direction of the scent and powerfully bound backwards. I bound backwards over parked cars and even buildings as shocked onlookers stop and marvel at my athleticism. I tensed for them as I glided through the suburbs with ease. Queston's scent was getting stronger. I had bounded through to the outskirts of town and to the edges of a forest. I was close. I stopped bounding and started stalking. I silently crawled through the long grass like a large cat. I see a house just through the tree line. This must be Queston's lair. I reach the beginning of the clearing and stay in the long grass to remain hidden. I flatten my body like a blue-tongued lizard and start to observe Queston's house, which was roughly 100 metres in front of me now. I see movement at the side of the house. It's Queston. He's hanging his washing out, and the fool has his headphones on. Perfect. 
He won't even hear me coming. I move out of the grass and start hammering towards my target exactly like a jacked up goanna. I was closing in. 70 metres, 50 metres, 30 metres. I load my back legs and launch myself at Question like a desperate toad. Question was reaching up to his clothesline as my skull slams into the middle of Question's back. I hear the air leave Question's lungs and watch his body crumple to the floor. I stood and watched Question squirm on the ground in pain. Oh, my, my back, my back, you cunt. I let Question recover and get to his feet. It's time, Question. Let's finish this. Question stares at me and nods. We both start advancing on each other. As soon as Question is within reach, I throw a punch straight into his gut. Question returns fire with a punch of his own and lands it flush on my jaw. I stagger backwards as Question charges forwards and lands a left punch right in my throat. I can't breathe and fall to the ground and Question immediately starts stomping my legs. I sling my arm at him and crash the palm of my hand straight through his shin bone. His shin snaps in half like a breadstick and Question screeches in agony. He falls down and I grab his snapped legs and start jerking it up and down over and over again. Question is howling in pain, but manages to sit up and throw an elbow in my face. He connects and smears my nose bone across my cheek. I drop Question's broken leg to hold my broken nose, and Question stands on his good leg and sinks his teeth deep into my scalp. I feel his teeth puncture my skull before feeling the skin on my head being ripped away like a cheap sticker. I uppercut Question and toe punt his nutsack. I feel his testicles pop on impact as I drive up with my kick. Kick. I see Question's eyes widen as he realises his nutsack is torn, and I grab his left arm and drive my knee through his elbow joint, completely snapping his other fucking arm. Question fires a punch with his right arm, and it dislocates my jaw. Again, I stumble backwards as a one-armed and one-legged Question hops at me and drives his knee into my chest. I hear my ribs break when he lands and I fall back. Question mounts me and starts to choke me with his one arm. I place both my hands on the arm he's choking me with and slowly start to twist. I twist and twist until Question starts to scream again. I keep twisting and then rip Question's entire fucking right arm off. He leans back in pain. I sit up and drive my thumbs deep into his eyes until my thumbs split his eyeballs in half. He's defenceless. No arms, no eyes, and only one functioning leg. I stand over him and watch him slowly die. Just please, just kill me. Question is bleeding to death. I adjust my dislocated jaw and snap my nose bone back into the centre of my face. I was injured. A fair few broken ribs, but nothing serious. One last have before I kill you, Question. I slide my baby mat into the hole where his arm used to be. I start slowly thrusting forwards and savouring my victory. I salivate with pleasure and let the fleas that infested my body bite me as much as they wanted. Question had gone quiet. I look down at him and something makes me stop having. I look deep into his destroyed bleeding eyes and feel utter despair. No joy at all. Something wasn't right. This should be the greatest moment of my life. But all I feel is darkness. I extract my little brown and begin sobbing. Question, what have you done to me? Why, why am I so sad? Question weakly replies, This is what you wanted, man. I get off of Question. No, something isn't right. I instinctively start bounding backwards. I bound backwards the fastest I've ever gone before. I leap over rivers. I leap over mountains. And the faster I go, the clearer my mind becomes. I was missing something. I push off even harder and bound faster again. Everything becomes a blur and I bound faster again. I bound so fast that time itself stops. Then it dawned on me. I can stop what I have done by never starting it. I must turn back time to stop my father quark shift from conceiving us with my mother choir. I begin to bound even faster and I notice time slowly starts to rewind. I start bounding back through time. One year passes, two years, five years, twenty years. I bound until I reach my destination, the exact moment when Question and I are being conceived. Suddenly I stop bounding and I'm standing in the bedroom of our old family home. Mum is laying with her legs spread on the bed and my father is standing over her with a clearly throbbing little brown. They are both drunk, absolutely wasted drunk. Before my father jams his meat cylinder into my mother, another man enters the bedroom. It's me. Past me. And I'm also completely smashed and holding a toy. To my utter horror, I watch me go and stand next to my dad. 
Then we both start having my mother. What? How can this be? I thought me and Question were twins. I watch on as me and my father completely destroy my mother's slit in a drunken stupor. Then I see the most horrific thing that I've ever witnessed. My father pulls out and sprays his mints all over me and my mother, but I do not pull out. I fill my mother to the brim with my seed. Then it all dawns on me at once. This is the moment Question is conceived. Conceived by me. Question is not my twin brother. Question is my son. That's why I feel such despair at his dying. This whole time I've been having my son, not my brother. None of us could remember because we were so drunk over a 20 year period. I'm a father. I have to save my son. I start bounding backwards the other way, so I'm going forwards now. Time starts going forwards and I'm bounding as tears squirt from my eyes. I can't believe Question has been my son all along. I arrive back at the present time. Question! I'm taking you to a hospital. I pick him up and race him into town. Hang in there, Question. He's in and out of consciousness. They take him straight into surgery and manage to save Question's life. He was in a critical condition, permanently blind, missing an arm, and almost certainly was going to experience severe mental trauma, but he was going to make it. While waiting in that waiting room, I decided there and then that I would change my ways. I learned that there's more to life than having. Life is about loving, and I truly felt sick for the pain I had caused. I decided I will no longer keep track of my haves, so this is the last have I will ever write about. The love for my son has cured my heart and mind. I am no longer Matt Brown.